what I thought. Yes, sir. Sure. Ah, just my threads. Fucking sounds like shit. Dude, that sounds... was a slaughterhouse in there, bro. <laughs> it was great. That was fucking epic, bro. Well, thank you, man. Thanks, bro. You know, I try. For the record, Hex is currently up 232x versus Bitcoin. Nice. Nice. We were just, uh, somebody was chatting about uh, the Kevin situation and, and counterparty risk lending protocols in crypto. Yeah. I don't know if you wanted to slaughter that horse. Anymore. No, they're all they're fucking yams, yeah. yeah. dude. You give your keys to someone else. They say they're going to pay you more in the future. You lose all your money. You become a headline. X number of millions lost with lending provider goes out of business or gets hacked or access scams or whatever the fuck. Over and over and over again. Pretty simple. It's brutal. I mean, you know, yeah, the only constant is that risk when it's you're supposed to have no middlemen in crypto. Why? Why is everyone jumping off of cliffs to land into middlemen's D's? I don't. I don't get it, man. Um, basically because they're noobs. People that have been in this shit Dude. long enough and shit go wrong enough times are like, yeah, that, that shit's it's if it's not your keys, it's not your coins. You're, you know, that's it. It's really that simple. So people that are too new, they don't get it. It's it's the reality. It's not your keys. It's not your coins. That's something that uh, we have to deal with a lot of the time when we're dealing with onboards, right? It's like people, they're like, oh, Coinbase. Yeah, I got my crypto on Coinbase. Like, dude, no. no <laughs> you have to like, break it down, explain what the seed phrase is. You really have nope. to like break this stuff down, dude. It's not. True. Like, <laughs> it's true, man. So uh, how's it been going? Like, I, w I wish I was doing more live streams and shit, but it's so boring for me to be like, yep, I'm still waiting on devs. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, I'm waiting on devs. Uh, waiting on devs. <laughs> like, what? there's great. nothing for me to say. Like, we well, have dude, to wait. I actually thought, I actually thought it was great, like, getting in Twitter spaces. I was like, if you, live streams are one thing. Twitter spaces are a whole other thing. It's like, uh, you're, right. you're just being here, hanging out with us. That's, like, the biggest thing in the world for, for everyone here. And I speak sure. for the whole room. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you, bro. I think too, like one of the one of the hidden values that kind of aligns uh, with some of the OG Richard content is like you can be as savage as you want in Twitter Spaces, man. People eat that shit up out here. Like on YouTube, I guess oh, cool. a lot of folks like grandma's tuning in, but out here on Twitter, dude, like the more outspoken you are, the the more oh, fire I did you good bring. Then. People love that shit, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, like, I did good in that, that last space, one then. <laughs> what, yeah, when he when he started to throw some weak ass jokes at you and you just fucking decapitated them, it's like that's what people want, man. <laughs> Like, this is the Coliseum. Like, they want the Dude, you they slaughtered those fools. I was sitting there laughing, laughing, bro. It was great. <laughs> I mean, look, they're great dudes. I mean, like, appreciate the space and everything. Like, no, no, you know, not to... He, he was wasting everybody's time with those weak jokes, dude. man. Right. If the jokes were good, it's like, I like them. But, like, the weak jokes, is like, dog, you're making us all look bad here. Like, stop trying. Right. Be funnier or stop. <laughs> That's uh, but you know you you also get to get all that engagement from their followers. Like if these people want to work up to two hundred, right, can you guys record that so that they don't rug it or whatever? Can you record it off stream or whatever? Oh, yeah. actually, both yeah. of those spaces were recorded. No, but you need to yeah. locally back it up. Go, yeah, I got to go and back it up. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll they'll throw that shit in a fire. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anytime I do a stream with someone else, they delete their end. So. Yeah bizarre you have There's to say people. your side locally or it will disappear i mean uh, i've been rugged so many times well i'm not rugged because i saved my side but like these niggas be deleting their shit bro like that dude <laughs> the, the bitcoin the bitcoin guy whatever the fuck his name was that shit lasted like four or five days and it got uh deleted <laughs> yeah. Mysterious. Like, why'd you delete it bro <laughs> Hey, hey Richard. I killed that. What's up, hey, man? I just want to thank you <laughs> for creating. Oh, that. thanks, bro. My pleasure, bro, man. I've been following you since the top hat days, and I just want to say thank you. But uh, my pleasure. You know. And, hey, uh, everybody that's listening that doesn't like my outrage marketing, fuck you. It works. Seriously. <laughs> like, look at my follower counts. Look at, look at the quality of the followers as well. Yeah, like, I'm getting reached out to it by Forbes and fucking, like, they're writing articles about me. Like, people that write articles want them to be interesting. The shit I'm doing is interesting. 
just hearing that the crypto market's down 90% for the 10th fucking time is not interesting. So the only interesting shit going on in crypto that I know of is me and the bankruptcies. And that's it. And Pulse Chain Big Airdrop. It's the only good shit I know about in crypto. Everything else sucks. Hey, nice. just a little housekeeping real quick. Like, no. I know everyone wants to be on stage with Richard. Like, I get it. Uh, but if if you don't have anything to say, like, it helps me cycle people around because limited access to the dude. So let's try to get people that can actually, like, contribute. Right. And that's another thing, that. by yeah. the way, guys, Bitcoin went down 73%. Ethereum went down, like, 80-something fucking percent. So if Hex does what it normally does, it's more volatile than both things, things and does, like, a 95, it's fucking normal. It ain't got to do with me twerking, dude. Everything's down. S&P's down. Cars are down. Watches are down. Ethereum's down. Bitcoin's down. Doge's down. Every, globally, everything's down. It's not because I'm torquing, okay? So don't call Vitalik <laughs> when the fucking I'm Ethereum talking. price tips. Like, it's, it's just right. like, I should be like, I'm out here doing everything I can to promote because I've, I can't. We have more devs than is imaginable. We have like, <laughs> like, there's nothing else I can do to make this shit go faster. It's going as fast as it can go. The only thing I can do is market shit I like. You guys should be doing that. When I see stickers all over the place, I love it. When I see, you know, interviews and promos and new users and shit, I love it. So, you know, go shake your ass, people. Proof of twerk. Proof Yo, of twerk. Richard. Uh, Hex Asians in the house. Uh, thank you, Richard, for uh, Hex and everything you're doing, brother. Love you. Uh, Konnichiwa Pleasure, from Japan. Uh, I'm out. I would do it, but my throat's fucked. <laughs> I would Konnichiwa you right now, but my throat's <laughs> fucked. <laughs> All good, brother. So hit me, guys. What do you got? We got for questions. I think this is the second or third stuff. time I got to go on stage with you, Richard. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Uh, what's going on in the crypto market is pretty interesting, and especially for how long you've been calling it out with that uh, that long Twitter thread that all the times that shit happens <laughs> in the crypto market, and you just say, like, I, I told you so, I told you so. And especially yeah. with Celsius and Banker, because uh, sure. that shows you CFI with Celsius, but Banker especially, because a lot of uh, Chainlink Marines put their link in uh, Banker, and I'm hearing a lot of bad things ha uh, happening with them. Well, so, uh, their single side of liquidity got rug pulled, apparently. So. Oh shit! So yeah, they like they would give you like they would give you like some talking. type of impermanent loss insurance, and then they're just like, yeah, about that, uh, not really, something along those lines. Yeah, the whole marketing thing was like, uh, they're better than Uniswap because they have impermanent loss. So a lot of people uh, really like, yeah. like that about Lol. them. But now uh, people Rug. are kind of losing money. No. Once again. If only Richard Hart founded everything. What's very interesting, too, is uh, people are just getting so wrecked and wrecked. And I was in another Twitter space a couple of uh, days ago, and they were just so frustrated. And they were talking about Richard Hart, you. And, yeah. and they were talking about how much of a genius you are when it comes to debating. And if anyone ever wants to debate him, you need a prep because he makes people look like fools. It doesn't help if you prep, though. Like, I'm still going <laughs> to do it anyway. I was say, you might want to prep your anus. You're just going to die slower. I mean, like, the the outcome is inevitable, bro. <laughs> it's like, you know, I can't lose. I can't lose a debate. I would need to be like, the, it would need to be like the end of motherfucking uh, Gladiator, where they, like, spiked him in the fucking lungs before the fucking debate. <laughs> like, I would need to have, like, some type of LSD dropped into my glass or some <laughs> shit. And I might still win with some trippy arguments. Who knows? I'm just saying, like, straight up debate, I can't do nothing but win. And that's the that's the greatest thing. The storyline of Richard Hart still continues. He's still winning with Hex.com and everything Undefeated. else is still getting wrecked. And Undefeated. I'm really looking forward to the documentary and uh, continue your success, sir. Thank you, man. We all win together, bro. Thank you. All right, yeah, hey, Richard. Richard. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, what's up? You had your hand up first. Hey, hey, Richard. Thanks, man. I just want to say thanks a million for everything you're doing. I got. I mean, I just pleasure, I can't bro. tell you enough. You, you're, you're putting people on the map that would have never had the opportunity to, to, to basically get there. You know, the average person um, is going to have a, a life-altering event and has has been having life-altering events. Um, you know, we've been talking. Orca and I and a bunch of other people have been talking a lot about a lot of 
you know, current events, a lot of global events that are happening right now. We're trying to, you know, spread the word about our future responsibility and everything that we're going to be responsible for, because we're probably going to be one of the most successful, if not the most successful ecosystem in the near to mid future, if not the long term, too, of course. But my my Very question cool. to you, yeah, I mean, I just see it, man. My background is economics and money and banking, and I see it. Um, my question to you is where you see the WEF playing out. Obviously, you know, I've said this many times, and I know we all believe this, that Pulse Chain, Pulse X is going to be the number one layer ecosystem rolled, rolled out as we move past 2025. But what do you see the WEF doing regarding CBDCs and how, I mean, you know, maybe for people that are listening now, how, you know, it's going to help people get around the very totalitarian, Orwellian, draconian, um, you know, efforts that, the elite are making on us all. Um, they're really taking. They're 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 really making some moves. And yeah. you know, we've seen this is like this is like an avenue out of it, a way out of it. And we're all trying to figure out. You know, there's a huge um, projects being put on this now and being built on this like never seen before. And just really curious as, as to your thoughts on you know what they're I mean, doing. I think, so I I think that like answer your question is gonna be weird. So like I care a lot about price. And so the WF doesn't affect crypto price for fuck. It doesn't matter. But the stock market does. So oddly enough, inflationary, fucked up, upside down clown world, print money out of thin air forever bullshit. It's actually very good for crypto. So when they decide, when they finally finish crashing the market and decide to start devaluing the dollar again, that's probably like, going to pump the stock market and thus Bitcoin and thus the rest of crypto the hardest. Unless, right. unless, I mean, look, we were 30x and Bitcoin went down half the first time, which is like 60x in, in comparison. So like, hopefully we do correlate again. We might already be, de we might already be decorrelated now. Who knows, right? Like, people, people eventually get tired of fucking selling. Um, so like, I, so I care more about what the Fed does in regards to like price than I care about the, the World Economic Forum. And then like there's people attacking way harder than the World Economic Forum. So for instance, there's the other uh there's other large multi government, non governmental agencies, whatever whatever the fuck they are. Like what, what who's the NGOs. Lagarde lady? Who who she's who's she the mouthpiece for, Christine Lagarde? I am the mouthpiece for there. There you go. So the IMF has a lot more to say than the WAF. The WAF just had the worst marketing. They're easier to fuck with because their marketing is so obviously bad that they get picked on more. But in reality, the IMF is probably a way larger threat. And well, then, sure, like... They're connected. They're still connected. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, the IMF is way more of a threat because they, they add people to blacklist or not. So, like, the WEF can't add you to a fucking blacklist. The IMF can. Um, I think... I mean, look, it's been a while since I played Alphabet Soup with this shit. Because I haven't focused on it, right? Like, like the right. EU just passed a lot of fuck crypto in the ass. So, and that was neither of those entities. That was just two douchebags that happened to be in government that decided to make a terrible law. So, like, two assholes that don't know shit about shit decided to make a terrible law, and there it is. It, and it didn't have to do probably anything with either of those big entities, right? So, like... Legislation, man, it's, uh, the you know, the legislators are the most direct path to attack and they're attacking. And, yeah, we were know, watching you. We were watching you watch the EU voting going on as, you know, as you're tweeting it out. Irritating. Man. Very irritating, Frustrating, bro. man. I was like punching a wall watching it happen myself. Yeah, because you're like, these guys are just like, they're making their economies less competitive. Like the dollar's eating their lunch. They're at 10 and 20 year lows versus the dollar. Let me go look up the fucking Euro USD chart real quick. I remember this being at 10 and 20 year lows. Let's yeah, check so it. The yen, the euro, and the pound have been breaking down heavily. The the yen just broke a 20 year uh, inverse head and shoulders at the neckline going up. So everything's selling off against the dollar. You'll see the DXY run to probably 120, something like that. So this right now, like I'm looking at the fucking your USD chart. This is like, the, I mean, technically the last time it was this cheap was 2000 days ago. So that's like, what, seven years? No, it's, 
Yeah, look at the double top that it's got. That it's got. Mm, I mean, my chart when Euro goes down. I mean, it's a so basically like there's support at this area. They're supported this parity one to one ratio, at least on the Euro USD chart. So I wouldn't, you know, this is support. There's support at this parity place, but it might not hold it. And it used to be as high as one point fucking six in two thousand eight. So fifteen, you know, fourteen years ago, this shit was sixty percent more powerful. Anyway, the the euro zone fucked itself with this last crypto law that they did. And uh, they're sitting on fucking support, which, you know, it basically means it can't get any cheaper without, like, the chart looking like doom, you know? Like, <laughs> fucking... Yeah. Anyway. So, oh, as far as, like, the anonymity yeah. shit, like, thank God for Tornado Cash, because, like, Tornado.Cash, that's, like, the only fucking way to have anonymity in crypto, pretty much. If you use Monero, you can't get out of it. Oh, you got Monero. Cool. Now what? What are you going to do with it? You can't do anything with it. can't buy coins with it. Where are you going to buy coins with your Monero? I guess Kraken supports it. I don't know. I, but like Tornado Cash, it's the shit, dude. Like, you can get your you can get your privacy, you can get your anonymity, you can get your fucking human rights back. People don't realize that like privacy is a known human right. But for some reason, people are so scared to even admit it. And then you're like, oh, you don't want to admit it? Well, just give me all your passwords then. You don't need privacy? That's cool. Give me your passwords. All of them. No? I thought you didn't know privacy to... Oh, you're lying. Ah, I get it. You're a fucking liar. Okay. You know? Well, there's going to be a day when this all rolls out and you're going to be nominated for a Nobel Prize. I got a good Thank you, bro. friend of mine who I considered an uncle who is actually one of the guys who goes around the Nobel Foundation. It's some nice. long, long name up there in Sweden. I can't pronounce nice. it. I'll kill it. And uh, Percy's going to uh, hear from me. He's down in Miami and he's like an uncle to me. So I'm going to I'm going to absolutely I will add that to my me. bragging list, bro. If I yeah, can, if I can get the sure. Nobel, it's just going to go right under the world's largest diamond Nobel Prize winner. I'm telling you. Philanthropist. Something. You'd be surprised at how much girls don't care about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> they they really do not give a fuck. They like your Not a single fuck given. Let's go with some hands. Who's Thank you, that? Pulse? You're welcome. Sure, You're welcome. Just You're welcome. Just real quick before we get on the hands, everybody retweet the room. Let's get as many people in here as possible. It's a good opportunity for people to learn, reaching people that we don't find on other platforms. And yeah, uh, I to Richard's it. point, man, for sure. To Richard's point, like, we're in blockchain because we have censorship-resistant technology, man. So, like, fuck the EU, fuck the WEF. Like, keep pushing and, and use Tornado Cash if you need that privacy. Like, this is designed to overcome the alphabet soup that's out there trying to suppress freedom of humanity. Well, and, and if any of you guys listening are in the fucking government game, better laws make for better countries. If you can, you know, somehow help create better laws, that's nice. Because, you know, it's it, it's better when you're non-adversarial. If you have to be adversarial, it's just harder, you know? Word. It's like winning fights is great, but not fighting is even greater. Evade and avoid if you can. Speaking of better countries, hint, hint. Tell me. I mean, America is better than Europe in this regards. I'm, I'm talking about Pulse Nation, man, your country. <laughs> oh right, yeah. I mean, that's years out, bro. That's seven, six, six, seven years out, probably. It's out there still. Uh, we're working on it behind the scenes for you. Thank you, man. I mean, free zone in a country with no crime would be grand. That's the fucking dream starting point. Who knows what country that might be? I don't know. I haven't really put much effort into it. God bless America, Richard. God bless America. True. Happy Fourth of July, bro. Happy Fourth yeah. of July, brother. Hundred percent. Thank you very yeah. much. Just wanted to note that um, crypt, uh, Richard, you're bringing in over uh, fifteen hundred listeners on a uh, holiday evening, and uh, you know I've oh, been cool. sitting on my dog ass and watching the whole entire crypto Twitter just burn week after <laughs> week. After wait just... till the next leg down. <laughs> oh, one hundred. If you think it sucks now, wait wait till you get like under seventeen five on BCC, and you'll be like. 
Uh, yeah, once I mean, once people are wrecked enough, they stop logging in. They stop checking their balances and shit. It's funny. It's not even that, brother. It's the fact I just have to give you your flowers, man, because it's like you pulled in in 20 minutes before that space got rugged. Man, you pulled in 1,500 listeners, and, you know, these there spaces is, that go on have been There like, was 1,750 actually on that last one, yeah. That's pretty sick, dude. That we were actually sick. crashing Twitter. Yeah, we were basically crashing Twitter. Do you, do you uh, remember <laughs> that, that time I ratioed MSNBC? They said, like, Elon Musk is an arrogant whatever. And then, then I posted my picture of my foot, and I 10x ratioed their shit with my foot picture. They reposted that again. Like, they, they <laughs> took the same fucking post, the same Elon is a despot, an arrogant despot post. They posted it again. So then I had to repost my foot pic. And I'm like, hey, guys, so we're doing this again, I guess? What the fuck? Like, I came so, here and smacked you around once already. I see that you want more. Yeah. You know, right? And they have 4 million followers. And yeah. So your tweets have popped in a bunch of new people. Um, I've been working for two months with this group that's called Intercoin Blockchain Beauty. And all of a sudden all your tweets started popping up and they started following you and they were like, what That's is great. this Richard Hart doing? They're like, his marketing is amazing. And uh, so I set foot up picks. a space with it's them. All about the picks, bro. Yeah. Like <laughs> they, no, they love everything. They love all the outfits. They started like competing, you know, competition about it, but um, we set nice, up a space dude. to onboard them to hex July great. 14 at 10 PM. We're going to be gifting them hex at least 10 to 15 people we're going to teach right. them about staking and they're really pumped up and cool. if you want, yeah, you could do an interview with them. I know they're probably not a huge company, but uh, I shot it to you in the DM. So check it I'm out. I'm so tired and voice fucked right now. I don't even want to think about any more interviews. Not, yeah, no, not now, but you know. Right. So guys, what we're going to do is Fox News, soon. like they message me, like Fox News wants to do an interview with me. Guys, we That'll got like 17 cool. people waiting for to request to speak. Yeah, so wait, 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 go if your ahead. hands not up, if your hands not up, it. I'm gonna drop you down. If your hands Sorry, not up, I'll I have drop you down. one last really important question. Yeah, um, go for it. This, this talk on inflation has me thinking about hoflation, and uh, do you believe in the the idea that it's uh, harder to um, get a girl that is um, worth worth a uh, Worth, uh, you know, it's like you have to work 20 times harder for a 20% less, less, you know, valuable girl. Um, I mean, like, basically the way girls kind of, the way girls kind of work is like the girls that are rated 10 usually get the guys that are 10s. The girls that are 9s usually get the guys that are 9s. Everyone tries to do the best they can do. And your best option is to improve yourself. Because you'll bring yourself with you to your next relationship and you'll always have a next relationship. But if you work sales instead of product development and you're just working angles and game and shit, you know, when that relationship like burns out, you're fucked on the next one. You're the same douche you always were, you know, you just pull it. Like being the best you is the best thing that you can do to like to get better chicks. So like drop weight, get your fashion right. Get your posture right, have good frames, talk about good shit, you know? That's, like, your best bet. But you, but you also do have to go out. Like, you have to step outside the fucking house or, or be on social or whatever. Um, but, I, like, I don't see any type of actual inflation. Like, everything appears to me to be the same that's always been. I'm not sensing any shift in the force. Other than, like, secular COVID kind of shit. Like, people get a little hornier right after they get off COVID lockdown kind of shit. Usually people get horny when it's hotter out too. So but I think the game's always the same. It's always been go read my book, survive. Go to the respect section, romance and some good shit in there. Amazing things. Go ahead. All right, we're gonna All right, go right, who's next? Let's go to KG. We're gonna go to, we're gonna go to KG. Guys, I'm gonna call hands, right? Because everyone got hands up. We gotta respect the hands. Let's just go one at a time. KG, if your hand's not up, I'm going to drop you down. So I can Wait, La Lazy, was, Lazy was here first. Let's give uh, Lazy a chance. He was here first. Lazy was, all right, my bad. Hey. Go ahead, Lazy. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Um, happy, happy 4th of July. Thanks for hosting the Space Hawk. I've been um, uh, nice to meet you, Richard. I've just got a, a, a question about markets. Now, I'll give you a bit of background about us. We've got like 40 million followers across Web2, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, I'm personally interested in cards and watches and all these kinds right. of uh, alternate investments. And, and what I found, uh -huh. including with NFTs, is that the community is great until things start getting a bit tough and then the community starts doom posting and in addition to everybody else doom posting, it starts to sort of create a, a groundswell of negativity. And so I think it's because the size of the movements. I mean, you're talking about people making 10, 100, 1,000 X, maybe 10 and 100 in NFTs. I'm not an expert on them, really, on their price charts anyway. I'm an expert on a lot of other price charts. So if you're talking about like a price move of like 10 and 100 X up, and now you're going down like 90, 95%, that type of drawdown has an effect on people that the limp dick, oh, I lost 20% on this card, just don't have, you know? So like... You're, you're, if if you had this type of volatility in watches and baseball cards, then you would see this type of doom posting and shit. Like, so it's a, it's a function of the this the, the amplitude of the volatility is the reason. It's not because it's, they're like that different as far as collectibles go. Yeah, well, well, and what I've seen as well, and and first of all, I thought it was just what people say when the market starts getting bad, but. People always say that the cream rises to the top. And I've definitely seen that in, in sports cards. Like the cards that nobody can get and that show up for sale once every three or four or ten years, once they hit the market again, it doesn't matter what the market's like, there's still enough people with enough money that are chasing those particular really rare variants for that card to always... Maybe, but, but the difference... I do agree with that. But I want you to understand that NFTs aren't that. So I have watches you can't get. Most yeah. watches have gotten fucked in the ass. The watches that I got, you still can't get them. The prices are holding up pretty good. So, like, most of my, like, sick as fuck, impossible to get watches are holding up pretty good. Um, you know, some of them take a 20% hits, whatever. I, I knew this. I called the top. I called the watch top as well. But I don't have time to play, like, get out of my watches because I'm building world-changing shit, you know? So, and, and I suppose that was that was my question. Like taking it back to NFTs for a moment, because there's no, in inverted commas, tangible element to an NFT other than let's say utility. It's, it's it's not the tangibility that's the problem. It's the time warping. So, you you can make a better substitute NFT with just better art, but you can't go back and make a twenty year old baseball card. So it's easier to introduce substitute goods to dilute NFT markets than it is to travel back in time to get something that is old. I think that's the primary difference, other than the fact that like NFTs are God, like try and invent a watch manufacturer and make a good watch versus try and make a good JPEG. And you'll find it's infinitely easier to make the JPEG. And so I, I, I think that it's, it is, NFTs are a much less rare and much less scarce market than the fake pseudo gambling mechanism has caused them to look like it's just you know, with with fucking jpegs on the roulette wheel instead of numbers so the so real so, utility in nfts is gambling it's not actually art so playing playing that out then let's just use your um old old baseball cards as an example sure. do you then think that like the crypto punks which are like sort of gen like the, the original generation of, of NFTs and possibly then like board apes that have got all the hype around it and the big bag holders, do you think that they're long-term going to do okay? Or do you think that they'll, they'll I, like I think the, now, now look, a lot of NFT guys have participated in my stuff. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. But I think the world's a better place if people stop overpaying for serial numbers loosely related to JPEGs. I don't think the world's a better place with people overpaying for that shit. I don't. If all that shit went to zero, I would feel better. Yeah. Seriously. Okay. I, mean, so I, I think that makes the world, the world a worse fucking place. So do you, do you think that there is a place for them, or do you think that it's better off? I think there's a place for art. I think there's a place for collectibles. I think there's a place for paying reasonable prices for them. But I think if you paid a million dollars for a serial number loosely related to a JPEG that you don't even have the rights to, you're a fucking retard. Yeah. No, and I, I agree with that. I mean, the, the one you of can the you can go buy real art that is really limited and really pretty, and, and and 
you can't get another one, you know, and you can't get rug pulled and the hosting can't go down and they can't change it to a, a dick butt pick. They can take all these fucking, these stupid JPEG project bullshits and just change them all to dick butt picks. I mean, I, I think one of the benefits of, of um, NFTs in particular is that the artists can continue to get secondary resales. But I mean, I, I get I get the arguments that you're saying. It's, it's good for the artist, but how the fuck does it help the retail? You know what I mean? Like, hey, I only get ninety percent of the thing I bought. Like, it's not a free ride. Like, you're fucking retail. It's not just like I agree. It's good for the artist, but it's not good for the retailer. Yeah. For the, for I the, mean, you know, it, to like. like where the artist is getting zero percent, it's be, it's better than nothing. But I see what you're saying. Why the fuck do they deserve anything? Why do they deserve anything? Explain that to me. When I buy a car and then I sell it to someone else, does fucking Lambo get to like get a ten percent cut on this shit? It's disgusting. It doesn't it doesn't even make sense. Why the fuck does the fucking artist deserve ten percent cut when I'm the one selling the fucking thing? I got to do the marketing. I took all the risk. I put the fucking money up. I paid this motherfucker in full, and then I still got to give him ten percent for what? It's stupid. It's a reason you don't see it anywhere else. I don't have to give the manufacturer a 10% cut when I sell my fucking car. I don't have to give Rolex a 10% cut when I sell my fucking Rolex. I don't have to give Bitcoin a 10% cut when I sell my fucking Bitcoin. I don't understand why people think it's okay that you leech your ass on and fucking rent seek on some shit. Like, a hundred years later, you're still going to be getting fucking royalties off of this thing? Like, I don't know, man. Well, I, mean, I don't as, know. As the original creator, I mean, I, I see a lot of, I see a lot of um, validation around secondary resales to artists. But, I mean, I get what you're saying. There, there are some other examples like royalties and, and things like that with television shows. But, I mean, each to their own. I think it's important if we want artists to keep creating um, to make all these things that we... But, but I, think, I think if you pay an artist enough with that, that resale shit, they'll literally stop creating. Well, what I, I think a large part of art is pain. Like these niggas need to have to need money to get the fucking paintbrush out. A lot of the time, that's how I feel about it. What, what about musicians? I, I understand the PFP artists. I can't stand PFPs for the most part. Uh -huh. But I see a function being stacked. You're never getting paid for. You're never getting paid for NFT labels. music, dude. It's never happening. We that shit. That ship has sailed. Music is free. Do live shows if you want to make money. That that market's already fucked. Like the market's fucked already. It's not getting unfucked. People aren't going to decide. Like you know what? This would be like trying to charge people for Internet Explorer. You could try. Go ahead. Go make a fucking Internet Explorer and try and charge for it. Go try and charge music. Try and sell CDs and shit. That ship sailed, man. The market's been demarginalized. People are used to paying zero and will only continue paying zero. This is the, way, the reason all the news sucks, is no one will pay for news. So the news that you get is the worst news possible. The shittiest, clickbaitest. And then, look, I even teach you how to fucking skip paywalls. That's how shitty I am. Just keep slamming the escape button. Works most of the time. As soon as it loads, start mashing escape. <laughs> there you go. Or you can use archive.org. So, like, right, gonna, you know... Right. KG, KG, you're up. Good questions, man. Good questions, NFT guy. I, I, I appreciate it. Richard, how's life treating you, bro? Uh, my throat's fucked up, and I've gotten so much pussy that's amazing. I'm, I'm drowning wow. in pussy. I love it. Wow. All right. I, I, I love pussy, I'm dude. sorry, but good for you, dude. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm happy for you. Happy for Thanks. you. <laughs> um, so I want to bring up what's been, you know, there, there's, there's two sides to this question debate in the community and i wanted to see if you could shed any light and possibly dispel the disagreement mm -hmm. are you waiting till the bottom of the market to launch no pulse chain? no no i'm not there it is. i'll tell you why there it is so, here's why we got to launch at zero for tax shit anyway so shit needs to be worthless when people get it so if it's going to launch at zero, anyway, the motherfuckers want to dump at zero because they're stupid. Get shaken out at zero if you want, you know? So, like, because of that mechanic, I would feel comfortable launching as quickly as I could. Now, there is some chance that I'm just not thinking about it clearly enough because I haven't put that much fucking effort into it, like this particular mechanic. And the reason I haven't had to put any effort into this mechanic is because I don't have a fucking choice because it's ain't ready. It's not ready. If it's ready if we wanted to launch with attack vectors that we know could be executed. 
and it would pause the network. It wouldn't cause people to lose money, but it would stall the fucking network. I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit. I like 100% uptime. So we need to fucking wait. So like, you know, it, it, it's, it's a fine, if you're going to have, if you're going to have to wait, waiting during a bear market is a wonderful time to wait, you know? But this is not me like purposely holding the software back. This is me waiting for awesome software to continue to be written. And it's standard par for the course. We endured the same exact shit when Hex was being built. It's just normal. The Ethereum guys are enduring the same shit now. Like building secure good software takes fucking time. And that's it. And there's nothing you can do to speed it up. I've done everything that you can do to speed it up. I got 14 devs now. It's a lot of devs. I can't reasonably add more. It's not possible. So we're maxed the fuck out. We're, we're operating. We've even got parallel backup teams in case one team fucking fails, the other team's rolling. Like it, I've done everything I can behind the scenes to make this shit be awesome. And now the only thing I can do is make it. So that's what I'm doing. And it sucks. It sucks that everyone else, you know, they just, they like, they don't get what's going on. They, they don't understand that I'm doing the right thing. And it's hard for me to do, and it's time-consuming. You, you know how hard it is to never wear the same clothes twice? <laughs> like, it's actually hard. I dare you to fucking try it sometime. And then to go do selfies and shit, it takes forever, dude. Like, it's, it's time-consuming as fuck. But you if you're doing marketing, this is what marketing is. Like, you know, it's... It's getting your name out there. It's getting your face out there. It's being interesting. It's being outrageous. It's being fun. It's being right. And I'm doing those things. And it's the best. Those are the best things I can be doing at this time. And wait till the fucking documentary comes out. The shit should be fire, dude. I can't wait. Cannot wait. KG, you good? Can't hear you. Yeah, you sound right. Uh, you just, you just said thank you for dispelling the rumor. And you're welcome. Yo, is it is it me? Ryder and then uh, me. Oh, oh okay. okay. Could you mind if I go? Because I'm in the UK. Like, time is so... Uh, like, bro, I've been up for like 6 a.m. almost here. No, I've been up for 48 hours, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bro. You're, you're a real G. Yo, what's up, nigga? Yo, Richard. Chilling, Yo, bro. Chilling. Bro, I'm, I'm 21. I've just finished my finance degree. You know what I mean? Nice. Useless, I, I but yes. Yeah. <laughs> I heard about you through a TikTok. I don't know. All throughout the nice, bullshit, dude. I was seeing all these other guys. But like, I'll be honest. I, didn't I gotta make a TikTok. About... I gotta yes. make one of them. So what happened was last year, I was actually like in the middle of my degree. I was about to finish it. I was, I got like a job, but my parents pay my way through college. Nice. And then, nice. yeah. And then what's it called? I had a thousand dollars from this job. It was like one of the first jobs I actually like was actually on it. And then right, I right, put right. it. I put it into like uh, like five cryptos on random from a TikTok, as you do. Oh, God. And, <laughs> now, but in that time, it was good, bro. You know, you right. did this in the summer when, when Bitcoin was at 30K. That was yeah. great to, to get in. And then yeah. obviously, I, there was like one one video of you popped up on TikTok, just like harassing some one of these Bitcoin <laughs> noobs, bro. You harassed him, bro, till the guy didn't know what he was saying. And I was just like, nah, <laughs> what are you saying? So after that, um, I bought like forty dollars at that time. Then I wasn't so sure because everyone's calling it a scam. At that time, it was even more a scam. Like when you looked on Twitter. <laughs> and then now, fast forward, when it dropped past the cent, I put in like a uh, like a thousand, and now I got like thirteen thousand coins. I staked them for like ninety days. Cool. I also got into the pulse X um, sacrifice phase. I could never get into the pulse chain. I really appreciate right, that right. as well. Oh. Nice. And um, my question, actually, to you, bro, is I'm I'm about to graduate, and I'm a, I'm mm -hmm. thinking of putting a large. My father died when I was eighteen, and okay. I'm thinking of putting a large amount of the insurance money he gave me into this one project that I want to do. Um, mm -hmm. I sent you a screenshot of it, a screenshot of the whole listed thing. If you want to just read your it. your project, probably sucks. It probably, I want to. I want to hear it from you, though. I want you to read it. And then yeah. Tell, no, no, not not. It's not crypto related. It's not crypto. Related. No, I hear you, but I'm just saying. Like, so here's. I used to give like startup advice and invest. Like, you know, I'm a serial entrepreneur, right? I've had a lot of businesses. I can give you advice on how to market and hire and you know design a product and structure the pricing and shit. And like, crypto fucks all that up. So like nowadays. In the old days, when it was just business or work for somebody, it was very obvious. Like, 
business wins. Mm. But now it's like business versus crypto and shove your thumb up your ass. And crypto wins. Like, how the fuck are you going to outperform? Like, when the bull, when the bull run comes, yeah. how are you going to outperform Hex or Pulse or Ethereum? Yo, yo, like, how? Like, you just I'm can't. 21, like, bro. I, I got no, I'm the same. Like, you can't. Yeah. I'm, no, but, like, you, I don't give a fuck if you were, like, if you were Paris Hilton, like, or whatever. Like, you to outperform shit that goes up a fold is nearly impossible. It's nearly impossible. For no. any normal business to even do a goddamn 10x is nearly impossible. So, so crypto is fucked up business, basically. Like, just tell me your business, dude. Just say it. Okay. Okay, let me just say it. So, basically, I want to start this dating app. Basically, I want to do Terrible. a dating app. Yeah, I hear you, bro. I want to I wanna do a dating app that's direct to consumer. So, I feel that Instagram is just... You're going to lose all your money. No, You're literally going to lose all your can money. Can I say... Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you about dating apps. The majority of dating apps are scams. They have bots message the guys acting like they're actual girls. The guys have to pay to respond. Ty Lopez used to run the scam. This, this is an old Ty Lopez scam. So, like, the, the whole dating industry sucks. You will lose all of your fucking money. It's a terrible idea. Me, everything is opportunity cost in investing, man. Opportunity cost. There's nowhere that you can put money that's going to outperform anything that Richard is creating. End of conversation, man. We're going to move on. I mean, Thank you, Richard. I want to, yeah. Like, I, 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 I hate to, like, a dude that's, like, studied business, study finance and shit. I hate to, like, just crush your dreams like that. But, like, even the guy that founded fucking BitPay, BitPay is successful. If he had just stuck with his coins in his pocket instead of working hard to make a business, he'd have more money. And he'll tell that himself. Yeah. Tony Gallippi from BitPay will tell you that himself. If a, if a fucking crypto business couldn't outperform crypto, your shit normal legacy business has been around for 20 fucking years. Definitely can't outperform crypto, bro. I wouldn't do it. You'll, you'll lose your money. You'll lose your money and you'll miss buying crypto. So. They're rock right. or MD. I'm not sure who's up next. Rock or MC3. Uh, I, 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 think, I think I was up next, actually. Whoever, just go. Let, just yeah. let Rock go. Let's go. Okay, all right. All right. So, 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 guys, so, I'm so, putting so, it so, so, out there that I think, and they're going to go, right? So don't go right. back to Rock Edison. Hey, Richard, right. Rock Edison, you're, how are you doing? Good. Good. Nice to talk to you. I have a, a question about the correlation and maybe incentivizing liquidity pairing with USDC for HEX. Is there any way to do that? I thought, well, I thought uh, the ETH guy fucked off. Like, the guy that was, like, linking HEX to ETH, like, I think he pulled his shit and market sold it. I think he was the dip. Like the big, there's some big dip, and I would think it was that guy. I'll go check the pools right now. Give me a second. <clears throat> While he's doing that, y'all retweet the room. Get a bunch of people in here. Put some cool hashtags or whatever the fuck you do. But try to get some more people in here while we got them. I mean. What's the fucking 630 ETH worth? Oh, jack shit, right? 630. What is it, like a grand now? Oh, yeah. We're, we're already tied to USDC. So, like, the Hex, USD, the Hex ETH pair has only got 630 bid on ETH. But the USDC pair has, like, 10 million bid. So, like, it's like a 10 to 1 ratio napkin math right here. On USDC, so we're already primarily USDC paired from what I see. Nice. We were we were temporarily like for a couple months, if my memory is correct, uh, to ETH. Not not primary, but just like there was a lot of liquidity in ETH there, but it's not there now. So we're primarily USDC liquid from what I see. Okay. Well, one more thing I want to bring up, um, Testnet. I've been dealing with it pretty much every day since nice. uh, since it was launched, and yeah. uh, not only is it working well, but it's been a good ed education to play That's with great. that free money. I'm glad to hear it, man. <laughs> yeah. So imagine one day when it. that's fucking real and main that it'll be great. I, I, I cannot because it will make me crazy if I do. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait. I mean, I am waiting, but like, I'm. I would like to see it. But I have, uh, I've, I've, I've pretty well built my bags up over the time of, of B2B anyway, and it's been amazing. 
So nice, dude. All right, bro. Well, good question, man. We're gonna grab the uh, next guy. I, I appreciate you, Rich. Thank you, man. Ryler, then Dolo, and then uh, MC three two three. All right. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Sarko, for letting me come up here. Um, yeah. So, Richard, I, I think we spoke in the the last room uh, briefly, but I wanted to see what you thought the future of Web three and how it's going to integrate with like the greater reach of society. I, I think I think Web three is a fucking scam. I hate the term. It disgusts me. It's some kumbaya fucking bullshit. Like I don't get it. Like, what? what tell tell me what Web three is. Uh, it's like a reference to a blockchain. That's basically what I'm saying. Like, how do you, I, what I'm saying is, how do you see the technology? So do you see, do you of see what I mean? Like, do, do you see how scammy that is? So, if the question really is, do I like blockchains? It's like yes, but you can see the fucking scam and calling shit Web three, right? So, so like from my perspective, like Web three means like, oh, you can log in with your Ethereum address instead of having to do some other bullshit. Okay, well then, just call it that. I don't like. I, I hate. I pretty much hate all the word salad fucking buzzword bullshit. So it's just like it's just like when Jack decided that he was gonna do web five or whatever the fuck. And he just like skipped four. And you're and then I'm like, all right, well then then fucking pulse chain is like web ten. It's just it's gross, you know? They're not it's not a real thing. I think my call dropped. Of course it of course it fucking did. Uh, right, if you don't have any my questions, back. Lolo, go ahead. My back alive. Yeah, you're still here. Oh, cool. Yeah, good. Good. So, so, like, I love the idea of replacing centralized bullshit with decentralized stuff. I really do. That's Web3. But the, the assholes popularizing Web3 generally seem like kumbaya fuck, like, not really about it, about it, cypherpunks. Like, it seems like a bunch of venture capitalists, vulture capitalist fucks pushing fake, fake centralized shit. Fake defying people is what it seems like to me. So, like, I don't, I don't really like the term Web3. Next. Dolo, go ahead. Yo. What up, Richard? What up? Um, been killing it, dude. You've been doing Thank your you, bro. fucking outrage. If market. the market worked as hard as I worked, the price would be a trillion. So, yes, I'm trying. Uh, I hit you with a, a the N word pass card real quick. Thanks, just, just so motherfuckers wasn't gonna, you know, hop I, on your. I give it the soft A, the soft <laughs> A. Let me live. Let me live. <laughs> no, I had to hit you. And the orc is funny because he switched his hands to black hands, motherfucker. <laughs> but nah, yeah, please, nah, you guys are you guys are dope. I love what you're doing. Orca, that uh, stream you guys just had with uh, whales, <laughs> very intricate. Um, a lot of people out here aren't paying attention to what's going on. Uh, I know I'm supposed to be asking a question, but there's a lot of shit going on in this world, uh, especially here in the States, and we all know why you ain't over here, because there's too much shit Well, it's going just on. too violent, truthfully, dog. Like, yeah. The police want to get you, and the motherfucking criminals want to get you, and everybody's crazy, man. I'm from Florida. They eat your face. The normal population wants to get you. Like, it's just too fucked up. Look, if I was born in, like, the middle of America, away from the fucking water, probably it should be fine. But where I'm from, bro, it's fucking mad violence constant. It's not good. And every time I go back to visit, I see that shit, and I'm like, oh, it's all risk. Nope, don't want it. Yeah. It's not good. People people don't understand, man. It, that, that fucking shooting in Las Vegas was like the final straw. I'm like, I do not want to go see this shit. That, when that dude put like 30 fucking 100 round clips into the fucking concert in Vegas, and there was no way to counter, like, what are you going to do, return fire? He's fucking 30 stories up. You can't return yeah. fire. Right. Like, it's... And you can't... You ain't even allowed to carry it a concert anyway. So, like, it's fucking... I was like, no, dude. So I like to go places where I ain't worried about no dude with a hundred machine guns raining hot death for thirty minutes on no fucking concert I'm at. I went to a concert. I ain't worried about getting lit up by no machine gun. I'm cool with that decision. If motherfuckers that live in America don't understand that, I don't know what to say, man. Like maybe you maybe you too pussy to carry a gun. I used to carry. Shit's hot. I don't like my pants being pulled down one side. I don't like wearing a vest. It's too hot. 
<laughs> so I live places that's fucking safe and shit. Y'all niggas gonna live in the wild west and get shot at. Go go fucking ahead, but don't Bam. don't talk shit because I made the right choice. I made the right choice. I ain't people, get shot at. I'm happy. People are, people, Life's good. People are sleeping on the fact that this they can be the Fed and and the IMF and the it's bank. Nice. It's fucking. Nice. I really good agree. system. <laughs> Patch is a good system, bro. Yeah. Proving itself. Proving it. You know, take your time. Don't rush. Thank Tell you, man. That. Appreciate it, brother. And so go ahead there. and then uh, Angel. Hey there, Richard. Um, go. I'm a total pleb, and I, I cannot believe how awesome your community is. But I've, yeah. I found you in January. You, you, you I, I just got to praise you for a little bit, man, because you, the truth that you espouse to the community of people everywhere around the world is amazing. So I found myself in a situation where, um, an, like we, we sold a rental house and it just happened to be at, at a great time to sell. And, um, you know, I'm 42. My mom was like, you know, why don't you put the money in crypto? And I was like, oh my God. So it put some pressure on me to look into a safe move. Your mom told you to buy crypto. Yeah, she's eighty, and and she you must have me. genius genius in, in your fucking <laughs> lens, bro. Like, wow, I, that's I, epic. I feel uh, I feel like it's epic, Richard, because that's I, epic, I, dude. I, I my my all my I, I was like I can't f this up for my family, and yeah, we only have a couple rental houses, and 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 this one needed to be sold. So, when right. I'm, t- I'm telling you this because it's like a lot of money to me. Um, yeah. and, and I had to like, I had to get like a business account and, and, and I got my money onboarded and learning how to do all that has been a hellacious yeah, uh, thing. Yep. Um, so, so what I'm trying to get to is that is basically, um, I, I, I actually am going to, uh, I'm, I'm start DCA this month and, and I haven't, have been, I was so lucky that, that, uh, Coinbase held me up because I was going to get in at like you know, 15 cents and stuff like that. 10 cents. Lucky and, the thing, bro. It happens. Yeah. And, and, um, so I, I like some projects in your ecosystem. Um, I love a fiat, but I just don't have the bandwidth to learn it. Um, I love Maximus. And then they have these two new projects coming out, which I, I think that they're, they're going to be terrific. Can you, and those are really, other than like meme coins and stuff, I really think that those are functional things. To, and there's like, I think. Hold on, hold on. I yeah. zoned out for a second. What okay. are functional things? Um, the f- most functional things. I, see, I'm trying to figure out how to, uh, uh, what to invest in in your, in your ecosystem. Because. Well, only one thing exists right now. Pets. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm going to get my double. Everything else, you got to wait for it to exist. Excellent. Do you have a question? Because now we have a lot of people waiting. Okay, my, here, here's my well, question. Well, his question is probably better than all your guys' questions. His question is like, how can he enrich everyone else on the call? So why don't you let him finish? <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> like, Richard. I appreciate it, my man. pleasure. And, Jesus. And, this motherfucker's like, how can I buy? Everyone's like, shut the fuck up. It's like, hey, what? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> why don't you guys shut the fuck up? Let him... Let him figure out how to build it. So I'm, 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 yeah, I'm a total newbie. I've got um, yeah, yeah. four hundred thousand dollars in cash, and it's all sitting yeah. in a legacy bank account. I finally, yep. Coinbase fucked me up so bad. I had to get a, an account at Gemini. I just got it last week, and so yep. I put I put forty thousand so, dollars into the account mm-hmm. at Gemini, yep. Yep. and I'm like, holy shit. Okay, so I'm going to sack. Uh, or excuse me. Um, I'm going to. Yeah. Um, don't do not sacrifice that shit's over don't no no, no. okay oh yeah okay. No, I, I meant to say, say dc i'm gonna dc okay again. okay and and then get my doubles and then um i think i'm gonna do DCA is, a little bit in july a little bit in now what do you say get your when you say get your doubles what does that mean well it means when um the you talk about that, participating before pulse chain exists okay i understand the, i want to be able right to in before copies. the fork i get it i understand and and so, and and so so what I want to do with my copies is I want to get Pulse X, um, you know that incentive token. I really want to get that, and I don't hear very many people talk about it. 
and then I so could you elaborate? I don't. I don't think that that one is going to have as good tokenomics as everything else. Because okay. like, I, I I that's the reason you don't hear about it. <laughs> because okay. like we know that Paul Sachs burns a lot of the fees. We know that Paul's chain burns a lot of the fees. But incentive token, it's not deflationary. It's inflationary. Okay. So like, I mean. It, it seems like the incentive token is kind of its primary like claim to fame is that there may be liquidity on the other coins tied to it, and then it may float with you know pulse and pulse access price maybe right like I can't can't give you expectations, um, but like I, I yeah I mean I'm not as excited. That's of all the coins, that's the one I'm least excited about. It's the least okay. exciting to me. Now, maybe it might work out that for some weird reason it's just awesome. But like, I, I, I think Pulse Chain is awesome. I think Hex is awesome. I think Pulse X is awesome. The incentive token, maybe it'll end up being good, or maybe it'll suck. I'm not sure. You know, it's it's <laughs> it, it's like, it's it's a it's a fucking incentive token. Like it's, so, it's like okay, let's take Uniswap, right? Uniswap has a token, Uni. Why why is it worth anything? It has absolutely no relationship to Uniswap, the functioning exchange, at all. None. But it still has billions of dollars of value. Why? Don't know. So, you know, it's it's the incentive token may gain value. Like, it's... I'm least excited about it. I hope it's fucking great. But, like, I think the other coins are better. Better designed. Got it. I think I'm just going to... Ver- for legacy purposes, just stake and be happy and know that I'm not going to do anything crazy. I, I do, when I say do something crazy, it actually is regarding Fiat, the company, the, the, you know, the, you know, you know, Fiat.io. Um, it's not crazy, but not knowing what I'm doing would be freaking crazy in that system. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's your, I mean, what's your so like, I, I, You've got years of chart available for Hex. Hex exists now. You know, it's... The dip is harsh. So, like, I have no problem suggesting to my best friends in the world that they buy Hex right here. I have no problem doing that. And I have friends that, for somehow, magic, they missed when Hex launched and they kicked themselves very hard. And now they're able to get in. You know? And so I, I'm, I'm happy to suggest it to my best friends, you know, with caveats, like I'm not a financial advisor and doing research and all that That's shit. Right. Um, but like, so I, like as the founder, I believe in Pulse Chain, I believe in Pulse X, I believe in Hex, incentive token, I hope it works out, but we'll see. And uh, I don't know, like it seems like you just need to choose, like, the rate at which you want to DCA in and how much you want to allocate to hex because it exists now. And then it sounds like you're going to be sitting on USDC until the other shit hits market is what it sounds like. I, I, I want to, I just want to, I, I think I want to keep some USDC um, so that I can buy until Pulse and Pulse chain come out yes, sir. or until Pulse chain Pulse. Seems, yeah. it seems like reasonable path. I mean, I don't see any problem with that. Can, can I ask you a macro question before we yes. get off please? Yeah. Yes. Uh, one more. One more. One more. And thanks. And thanks so much for for asking the most important question in crypto, which is, how can I participate? Thank you, Richard. You're and so thank cool. your grandma for me personally. She seems amazing. <laughs> she's my mom, and she's gonna hear this. Re- this oh, your mom. Nice. Can you say Can you say hi, mom, please, for me? Hi, mom. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Okay. My pleasure, man. So, so, so my macro question is because I heard you talking about Web3 and, and that's amazing and it's how yeah. stupid you think it is and all that. But when when do you think that mortgages are going to eventually be like on the blockchain and people can buy shit, you know, buy properties and like... Well, you know, I just I just talked to a guy in mortgages uh, a few hours ago and he leaked that data about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac like not buying uh, buying up people's loans anymore. Mm. which is going to make the cost to get financing just insane. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if what he's saying is true, that's how rumors are. You don't, you don't really know if they're true, but this dude's pretty smart. Um, when do you think that... And then, like, 
Oh, go ahead. Well, he, he mentioned he mentioned that one of those two entities actually would already accept crypto as, as collateral for loans, which I thought was very interesting. I was like, wow. Hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it only helps the unwrecked. Like the wrecked, their shit is not useful for collateral because it's not worth anything because they got wrecked. Yeah. 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 All right. Good questions, man. Good luck, bro. I hope uh, I hope it works I, out for you. I really like you a lot, Richard. You're so Thanks, wonderful. brother. Thank you, man. Have a good yeah, day. Yeah, heck, love. Thank, thanks for coming F- on. Digital, it's fun. Thank you, guys. Myself, Pleasure, guys. And f- you know, follow Pleasure. any of us up here. We'll help down. you along the way, man, to get you going. And if you ever, if, you know, ever have any questions, we'll always here to help you. Okay. Best commu- crypto community in the world, it really is. We're gonna Thank call you. a quick audible. We're gonna call a quick audible. Um, MC, hang, hang tight for a second. Psych Direct, you're up. No, I want fidgetal, man. Let fidgetal talk. Yeah, let fidgetal talk. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. What's going on, guys? Go ahead. Go ahead, fidgetal. I'm sorry. Happy fourth, y'all. So I'm, uh, I'm looking at the hex real quick. I, I do real estate uh, regularly. Uh, I do large, large scale right. developments. Um, All right. I, I hadn't heard the Fannie Freddie stuff. Uh, I'm pretty bullish on uh, on real estate, seeing as how most of the subprime right now is credit cards and cars, which is uh, almost uh, Almost too fungible. Right. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on. Sure. Isn't... I mean... So I've had this conversation with a developer once before. And he said something similar to shit you're saying. I, I think that, like... Most people care whether the price of the home they're in gets wrecked or not. Because they use that to get home errands of credit and fucking feel rich and shit or they could sell it and and be rich and so like i think that the market for developers is different than the market for normal joe homeowner is that true agreed Agreed. but there's there's also there's also a huge misnomer so when you see advertising online and i'm sure you know this that says that interest rates going up mean that that borrowing to finance properties uh, or, or single fa- SFR or single family residences goes up is is a, is a misnomer, right? Uh, it doesn't affect anything except for uh, non-fixed, and most people have fixed at the moment. So if you have an arm, that's then totally it might... not true. That that's uh, that that's true for people that already have loans. Exactly. Totally not true for people that want to get loans in the future. Under- Understood, but it's also it's also a choice price, right? It's a choice price of lending. It's not necessary in terms of where the market goes. But I, I agree. Um, so you're you're going to get massive foreclosures from the poor bastards that do have variable rate, and you're going to get new no new purchasing because the cost per month went up two x. So you can you can only get half the house for the same money now for new guys. What nobody what nobody's talking about in reality. If we want to be if we want to get doomsday, which sucks. Uh, is so I'm I'm a real estate attorney as well. Um, the the moratoriums that were that were put in place because of COVID, uh, especially with with regards to um, uh, fixed price housing and and uh, Section Eight and uh, rent control stuff. There's a doomsday coming, and the fact that if you own rent control properties, you're, the biggest thing you do it costs in LA it costs about 125 grand to get somebody out of a, a rent control property unless they are behind in rent. Uh, there's about a 60% percent pull up right now. It's cheaper well, to get them out then? Is it cheaper to get them out if they're behind? It's it's almost, it's $5,000. It's 10,000 max. Right. It's going to be, it's going to be a huge boom. And this wasn't the conversation I was going to have, but I'll have it. Um, but, that, but that's going to amplify supply. So getting those guys out will either amplify supply of rental or it'll amplify if they want to sell it. It'll amplify supply in the, in the the sales side. There's Absolutely. no way that's bullish for price. That's that's bearish for price. But it's going to leave tons and tons and tons of people homeless or or sure. yeah. I and the ramifications that. are huge. Uh, my question is really yeah. sorry. I, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. <laughs> look, I'm, I'm look. I I used to be a mortgage broker too. Or let, let me rephrase that. I used to have a mortgage broker license. It's different. I didn't fill out any 1031s or nothing. I just could if I wanted to. Were you there through 2008? Nah, dude, I was out way before then. That was a yeah, that was a real. Hell. So my question is, um, and, and it's it's a genuine, honest question. Um, so I was looking at the the, the APYs for for Hex, 
how sure. is it, how, how is it how is it sustainable oh because it's only paid to a very small portion of the participants so the reason that you can get on average 38 percent is because only 10 percent of people are staking if 100 percent of people stake you'd only get like 3.69 percent and then there's another little caveat in there in that as a new staker, you get much less reward than an old staker because an old staker locked in his earlier T-share price, which was much lower. But since the price of T-share in HEX only goes up in HEX terms, newer stakers receive less yield for the same input. And so that 38% that you see accounts for the average stake length of 6.8, the earlier cheaper shares, which you can't get now. And so like as a new staker, you're going to get less return than that because you can't get shares as cheaply. Now you can try and make up for that by staking longer to amplify your yield. And by the way, like the coin went up a million percent. The yeah, APY right. is 38%. The vast majority of your yield comes from the price movement, not from the APY. The APY is just extra awesomeness. So and if magically the market was flat or down, then the APY matters a lot. But like in a bull market, all of the, the important part of the yield is in the price chart and not as much in the, the APY. And how does that fare if if the markets, uh, especially the money markets and and, and uh, precious metals dip even further? And metals we have... is meaningless. Metals is totally meaningless to like anything. No, no, they don't matter. So no one cares about metals. Last kind of comment question. So one of my main sure. focuses in the in the space is having uh, tokens based. So I'm I'm all about the, the circular economy in terms of uh, that's that's a, a shit. So we've never say, had but... it. I mean, look, we've never had it, and it's been fine. I mean, Bitcoin went up six hundred ninety million percent. You couldn't use it anywhere. No, it really I really went up. I meant in terms of having tokens actually based on reoccurring revenue models from the real world. Um, it's it's actually not that good. I'll, I'll tell you why it's not that good. Sure. In Bitcoin, or rather in crypto, we have no, like in Hex, we have no, no negative rationales pretty much. But when you have real world businesses, there's negative externalities out the ass. And so what you're doing is you're just, you're counting for shittier businesses on the blockchain. Like here's a shitty business in the real world. It's been around for a hundred years. We sell boxes or we, we rent houses or we, we do whatever the fuck it is. It's been around for a hundred years or a thousand. And then what's on the blockchain? Duct taping, but on the blockchain to existing businesses doesn't give you superior economics or tokenomics or anything. It's just, it just sucks, which is why you so rarely see it successful. I mean, what's more better, asset, I mean, more asset backed and surety. So what using I'm saying is that those things are asset backed. I'm telling you that that sucks. Really? Backing with yes. real estate and having surety bonds as, as floors for yes. investment vehicles? Correct. It's terrible. Tell me that, please. Because it won't pump. Because it costs too much to back it. It's capital inefficient. So we're in Hex, we print money out of thin air. We don't have to buy something to back it, to make it awesome. So we're getting all, we're like, in Bitcoin, you print it out of thin air. In Ethereum, you print it out of thin air which is why they're able to go up millions of percent or tens of thousands of X's. But with your idea of actually backing it with real shit, it costs too much to buy the real shit and it doesn't leave anything over for price up. What if you actually own the real shit? I mean, look, if you want to do value add stuff and be like, look, if you buy this Ferrari, you also get an NFT or whatever. Go ahead. It's fine. But if you're going to make a coin that's like, yo, we have a coin that's like backed by Lambos. You're fucked because it costs too much to back it. It's just a bad business model. I know it's weird to tell you that the real stuff sucks, but like, go look at gold. It's real, right? Look at the price chart. It sucks. Go look at like the S&P 500. You could wait like 100 years to get a 10 X. Let me go check up a chart real quick, actually. <laughs> historically. No, I appreciate I, the I don't have this one memory. No, I yeah, appreciate like, the like, because it's just the balance between out of thin air shit and, and, and tangibility and... and and human propagation. So you it, you uh, do the you do the thin air shit in the bull market. You de-risk to the real shit, and then you put risk back on into the thin air shit again. You can't beat printing money out of thin air. It's impossible. That's what stocks are, by the way. 
So, like, here's another thing people don't understand. The stock is all fucking fake bullshit. So, okay, let's take Apple, right? Apple makes phones, okay? Buy Apple stock. Apple stock price goes up. Explain to me how the Apple stock price goes up. A guy buys a phone for a thousand bucks. How does his money get to your pocket? The occasional buyback? No, it's a greater fool. It's inflation. It's money from the government. It's all. I think. I, I think. I think. At the end of the day, at least there's pennies or, or more pennies on the dollar in, in case of a liquidation event when there's when there's tangible assets behind it. I guess that would be yeah, the only thing. You don't. Of. You don't get any of the pump. Everything Correct. that's safe sucks. Everything that's safe has bad return. It, it's it's it, gold. I don't. Is I don't safe disagree. There, right? sucks. Yeah, I'm just saying. That, like, I'm in this shit for mad gains. If I wanted limp dick returns, I could get them anyway. But if I want mad gains, I have to go to crypto or startups. But startups usually lose to crypto. I prefer startups. Hey, I look, man, you seem like fun. a smart dude, and and I hate to be like very pragmatic and shit, and just be like fake and gay outperforms real, but it does. Nah, dude, you're, you're preaching. You're preaching uh, an, an interesting paradigm of uh, of no. a balance of education and risk, right? Uh, at the end My of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, and if we're going to be completely honest, and anybody who knows me in the space knows that uh, I'm all about education and and uh, uh, information. Uh, at the end of the day, I would do a if I wasn't so tired, I would do a better job in this because it sounds like my <laughs> argument is it sounds like my argument is scams pumps the hardest, but I swear to God, it's more complicated than that. <laughs> No, like, then that's what I was gonna say, right? At the end of the day, yeah. to make to make a buck, you're taking a buck, and and retail and retail suffers. So I'm trying I mean, to I'm trying to find yeah, a strike like, between the two. Crypto really removes middlemen. It really is more efficient. It really is a revolution. It really gives freedom back to the people. It is one of the most important things in the world. One of the only things that could really improve the human situation for everybody. I really truly believe in crypto. I, I just don't think that adding gay shit behind the coins makes them better. <laughs> Listen, man. At, at the core of what I'm trying to, one of the things I'm trying to do is create a barter system uh, of of liquidity and, and, and simplicity. So I agree Good completely. Luck. Good luck. Thank man. you, brother. I don't want to take over the stage, guys. Thank uh, you, man. Nice chatting, brother. Respect. Good seeing you, Fidgetal. Um, you guys, I, I know everyone's Thanks, waiting and, and in line, but it's been a fucking sausage fest up here. So let's go to Hot Pro, and then uh, you guys can all fight. Actually, yeah, KDP was actually here before Hot Pro. Okay. Equal, okay. Opportunity. Equal opportunity. Equal opportunity. KDP, <laughs> take us away. A go. No, hot broken go. She's all good. Hot bro. Hey, Peter <laughs> Schiff got his fucking bank account closed. I feel like tweeting about this. Oh, wow. Well, thank yeah, you, they KDP. Shut it down. I'll pin it to and the I'll, top. I'll try to make this quick. You are... No, um, I like your voice. No, make it long. <laughs> um, well, you've been doing a lot of outreach market marketing Thank during you. the bear market and it has been um very successful considering you. a lot of the uh, charts and crypto have been down yeah. i have a general question that i thought would be good to at, um, ask while other people were listening and it has to do with um the support of your outrage marketing is there anything that you would prefer that groups of people would help you out with with your marketing Sure. Um, it's all about or... reaching new communities like whoever's doing the tiktok shit thank you so much i'm not on tiktok so you guys spreading it there is super useful do not do outrage marketing into your own community it's fucking retarded like there's this one dude who if i haven't already unfollowed him yet i probably will it seems like he's trolling hacks against like it's like dude what are you doing don't troll your own team you know like we're out here so like when i say shit like, so for instance, today I posted a JPEG of uh, like, you know, Bitcoin basically watching inflation kill its holders. Um, you know, I had to choose what I was going to write there. You know, like, what was I going to write on the, the kid getting killed? Was it me? Was it you? Was it Bitcoin holders? And so for art, art I think I put like you. But like, so when I, a lot of the times when I'm trying to do my outrage marketing, I, I have to find a way to exclude my team. Because I don't want them to feel like I'm fucking like flexing on them, you know. That makes sense. And it's hard, and it's like hard to like find the language to do it. So, but but like this this stuff only works to bring new people in. It doesn't like people that already know what's up. It's kind of like I guess the only nice part for them is that they can be like, yeah, my founder's on stage, 
where's your founder hiding, bitch? Yeah, true. That's it cool. does become sort of That's a circle cool. jerk, I guess, if you um, consider it just, you know, being but recursive just, but like, like that. But it is still, like, I don't want to say that the circle jerk doesn't have value because it has huge value. It does. Like, in other words, thinking and cultism and shit has well, great value. Let's say, let's say you are posting to somebody new or a, um, you know, some sort of celebrity or something. Does it right. help a lot to have a lot of other people post after you? On yes. your specific comment, okay. I think it does. I think okay. the algorithm would reward it. I think the algorithm would make it show up higher on their feed because I'm probably, if it's worth my time to post, they're going to be a high follower person usually. And so, oh, they're, and you know, the algorithm too. has to decide what to show them and what not to. It's not like we're going to scroll down for two hours, you know? Yeah. It's also helpful that everyone follows each other because it gives us all higher, um, higher trustability or whatever to the algorithm. And just in reality as well, you know. And the circle jerk's awesome. Like, if we're all just waiting for the software to be done and flexing on everyone else that's getting their shit demolished and failing, like, it feels good. Well, I like a lot of the circle jerk. Like, when everyone changed their profile pictures to, like, one of my tracks, it's like, this is awesome. <laughs> I love that shit. <laughs> yeah, I love it. But I just, I just want to emphasize that, like, bringing on new users is the primary goal of my outrage marketing. And thus, anything to that effect is... Is, is helpful to me like understandable thank you for so your thank, answer. thanks for the idea with the with the follow-on uh, tweets and shit i appreciate it and look guys you know i'm one of the the best debaters in the world why don't i do more debates i'm one of the best interviewers in the world my opinion i pulled it out of my ass i like it it sounds good i think i'm fun to fucking talk to hey why don't we have more conversations with people you know i don't have a pr agent so and, and i don't have a booking agent I, you know it's just me and volunteers. And those are you listening. So if you want to see me on cool interviews with shit, book them, motherfucker. Let's go. I got free time. I'm shaking my ass on stage. I'm ready to do interviews and shit. Let's go. All right, Richard, I think Katie might have some golf questions for you. Katie, go. The floor is yours. Um, I totally would rather do a golf question. I just decided to give up my funny troll for Richard to... Right. Relay a message. Are you po are you posting all the the golf girl photos with hex in their ass? I like them. <laughs> I think they're cool looking. And we don't have the golf community yet. Like we got the skating community, and we got like a bit of the rock community, but we don't have the golf community yet. So on ramp them, on ramp them hard. I'm more the one that comments on them, asking how many strokes they would like to polish oh. their shots, um, and nice. if they would like their balls polished. <laughs> Hey, there you go. I like it. I should go play fucking golf. Sounds like fun. I would not want to play golf. I would be much more incentivized to be in the caddy with the um, SP. Right. You steal everyone's balls. Can you imagine how pissed off they'd be? They just fucking ran by and told, took the ball every time they were going to hit it. They'd be trying to tackle you, I bet. All right, crypto, go. What do you got? Any crypto stuff? Questions or anything? MC3, you're up with Katie's son. Hey, Richard. How you doing, man? Doing good. What's up? Good, good. Uh, it's not crypto related, but it is touching on the uh, outrage marketing. I, I just want to say it, it's, I mean, you know, some people are saying it's cringy. I, I think it's brilliant and clearly. The marketing? I mean, I'm watching the metrics, dude. I don't know when it sucks. It's doing great. Yeah, it's doing great. And a, a little humble brag on my part. I was the one that tweeted at uh, Charles Payne the other day. Uh, great work. Yeah. I he's the one that wants to interview me. So great work. He's the one DMing you? Yeah. Dude, love it. Well, so I noticed actually I was sitting at home. For his people, his, his manager there, like yeah. the booking agent or whatever. Yeah. So I, I was sitting at home the other day and I, I just keep Fox Business on. Uh, it, it's actually especially entertaining right now to see the bloodbath going on. But uh, <laughs> but I noticed on his commercial breaks that he was hopping on Twitter. So after he had some Bitcoin maxi girl on, oh, God. Uh, he said, you know, he tweeted, he said, thanks for coming on, whatever. Or he said, she's up next or something. I can't exactly remember. Yeah. That, that's when I replied and said, you need to get Richard Hart on your show. And that was when he said, only if he brings the watches. So I was like, oh, yeah, shit, good job, dude. Working. You killed it. You totally Thanks, killed bro. it. Thanks, bro. You totally killed it. Thank you so much, man. More of that, guys. That's the ticket. I yeah, I really appreciate it. And uh, so that's why I tweeted out also. I said, you know, for all those who say the out outrage marketing isn't working, 
you know, the, it the, is the, this guy who is one of the most popular, if not the most popular host on Fox business knows who Richard Hart is because he just looked yep. back at me and said, only if he brings the watches. So yep. it's fucking, it's fucking Great, working. Man. And Agree. I, I love it. But, um, but yeah, and it's um, affordable. Like think about, think about buying the fucking, the naming rights for some stadium. You're like, guys, you're going to all money. lose money on that. You're, yeah. You're literally too dumb to realize how dumb that is. Like, but I'm I, I know what a bad idea it is. So I don't do that. I don't like waste my money on shit that doesn't work. Like, I made money well, on all my watches, and then they are also wonderful flex value. So, well, I like, think I think you're doing it brilliantly, to be honest, because you know it, it's you know you enjoy watches, you enjoy cars, you enjoy you know the the finer things in life, and you already got them. Why not use them to your advantage? I, th I think I can sell both all of my watches and all of my cars for more than I paid, except for maybe a couple. Oh, I bet. Hilarious. Well, definitely the cars, and I'm sure the majority of the watches. I, I don't mean just because I use them. I just mean because, like, the markets are weird. <laughs> right. Like, no shit. Yeah, I bought a truck back in October, and I could sell it for, like, 25% more than what I paid for it right now. It's with... not supposed to be that way, but no, currently it is. Yeah, exactly. Like depreciation driving off the lot does not exist right now. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say, um, you know, love what you're doing. And, you Thank know, you, I, I, you. I understand, you know, delaying the gratification, you know, wait, waiting for the right time. Well, not the right time, but waiting for, you know, the yeah, product. Yeah, waiting for perfect. it to be right. We're waiting for yeah, it to waiting. be right, man. And, and, you know, at, at first, I will be honest, I was like, shit, man, I want this to launch. But then I stepped back, you know, zoomed out a little bit and I said, well, shit, if a if the good, perfect product launches, it'll be better for all the rest of us. And look at what we're all able to do right now. I don't know what everybody else is doing in this room, but I've been buying Hex at a fucking discount and it's been awesome. You know, I'm building up that bag and. Honestly, it's all for the better. And I understand that there's some people out there that, you know, threw a Hail Mary and maybe sacrificed some money or, you know, bought some hex with money that they don't necessarily have. And that, that's unfortunate. But, you know, at the, they're also. At the well, same if they if they fucking got leveraged up to buy, sure as fuck wasn't my idea. Yeah, no. I ain't never told anybody well, that, to that was anything more, that was similar to that ever. Yeah, that Never. was more. That's more of a statement to the people that you know I see in the comments a yeah. lot that are that are saying, "What the hell? When's it launching?" Blah blah. I mean, blah, like blah. I'm the guy that put on the website that everything drops eighty five ninety five percent. That right. that's who I am. Yeah, and that doesn't and, sound like to take a leverage idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right, man. Well, yeah, uh, but uh, I will make one. Well, not a suggestion, but a thought. So some people have said. Instead of the crazy clothes, maybe like a nice tailored suit for some appearance. Maybe if you go on Fox Business, but yeah, but like I mean, that shit ain't gonna work, man. Oh no, that, but that niche is already filled. But, it just but doesn't this, make but sense. Here's, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker in the liner. You know, like your fabric in the liner. Oh is right, right. Ridiculous shit, and you just open yeah. it up and say, "What's up, bitches?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll think about it. I think I think I'd just come out. I, it seems too gimmicky. I would just come out crazy to start with. Just, just be you, man. Just, just, just be you. Be it just no. be, well, actually, here, here's a legit question, then I'll step down. Go, would you go. consider going on Fox Business? Or Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Bro, right. I'm an American citizen, and I ain't got no charges on me. I can go to America whenever the fuck I want. And they can't even yeah. stop me. It's my hey, fucking hey, constitutional hey. right. Yeah. But it's hey, the place hey, I, I, I agree with That's you. That's not my fault. Yeah, and hey, I agree with you about the states right now being the wild, wild west. Uh, I, I'm the city I live in right now just retook first place for highest murder rate per capita, and I carry my gun every single day. Yeah, and, yes, and, and, yes, and when you carry your gun, bullshit. it doesn't protect your family. Your exactly. family can get lit up, and you ain't there. So it's right. stuck. Well, it's my, like, my fiance it just carry, ain't good. Yeah, I got my fiance to carry a gun too because you know, you know. She's a cute little girl driving a, a little a little car and saw I know. I know what's up, bro. So, Look, everybody yeah. carries a gun. I tell you to carry a mace, too. Because sometimes you don't want to have to do the fucking defend yourself for some manslaughter charge. Like, exactly. So it's nice yeah. to have mace and a gun. Yeah. Go with whoever, which one you can escalate as needed. Yeah, and I've yeah. done some firearms instruction. It's in like if a girl grabs your, if, if, a, if, you're, if a guy grabs your girl's ass, she can't legally shoot him. 
Right. Yeah. But it would be nice to mace that motherfucker, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, like, up. anyone anyone that carries, like, you should carry mace for sure. Yes. It's, it's so illegal. Was, yeah, so I was in the military, uh, in the Marine Corps, and one of the main things they taught us was, you know, avoid confrontation at all costs. And, you know, yep. it, you know, don't don't escalate, you know, immediately to deadly force. And I've done some firearm instruction, too, outside of the military. And no. that's another thing, you know, you uh, I have a lot of friends, bless their hearts. They're like, oh, I'm carrying a gun, man. I say, eh, you should learn how to use that damn thing first. Well, not, not just people, how to use it, but when. It, it, I mean, how you get a brandishing a firearm charge real easy, bro, and you ain't going to be happy. Exactly. Yeah, you is not going to be happy with that charge, I'm telling you. Yeah, a lot, cost friends, a, lot. a lot of my friends don't understand when I tell them, you don't pull the gun out first. The gun is the absolute last resort when... No. When you know that there is, you know, the threat of immediate bodily harm or death on you or some other. I mean, it's people. different in Texas, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is, you got, I mean, in Texas, like, if you're in your house, man, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I hear All you. Right, let's well, take we got 30. All right, yeah, next one, next one. All right, Thanks, Thanks, bro. Be safe. All right real, real quick, uh, Katie did have one more quick question. and then Go ahead. Go on. Everyone share the room. Hey, just so you guys know. I'm not actually in a rush. Y'all motherfuckers in a rush. So you I'm can chill. Chilling. It ain't got to be that quick. Like, but you these know. people are not retweeting the room, Richard. So could you use your influence? Yeah, I'll, I'll try and make people go shit? quicker if I can. Like, you know, but I'm just saying, like, I'm not in a rush. Oh, no, you're good, though. Thanks, man. I'll just shut the fuck up. Katie, you going again? Or? Yes, please. Real, real quick, Katie. Um, you do have to bear with me because this question is not mine, but if the incentive token's goal is to incentivize people bridging money over to pair for liquidity, shouldn't it have the same game theory positive mechanics to keep it performing as long as possible? A random idea for a burning mechanism to offset the inflation could be to allow projects a space to advertise their projects to auction the spots with the incentive token and all the bids are burned. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, look, you could copy-paste all of the fucking gay pumpamentals that Pancake tried to, like, duct tape into their inflating shit to try and make it okay. But, I mean, in the end, I really hate all the Rube Goldberg bullshit. So I'd rather make it just, like, a cleaner kind of, oh, look, this is tied to these things and those things are good kind of thing instead of its own fucking... Because, yeah, like, let me put it to you this way. Why do I want to incentivize other people to trade shit that's not shit I invented? Why do I want to do that? I don't know. And, and why do I want people to, like, load up on that shit? So from my perspective, like, there's a window to on-ramp people into Pulse X when the fork happens to show them a better way. And if the incentive token is awesome for that period of time... To fucking on ramp those people to a better thing than Ethereum is, then then that's great. But like after they've fucking seen it, you know, it's like yeah, guys, it's it's if it lives or dies, cool. But like, I care about Pulse X, I care about Pulse Chain, and like incentivizing people to put liquidity on fucking shit coins is like, it doesn't it doesn't spice me up, it doesn't excite me, you know, because that's what it does. It's like why. Why the fuck do I want to see someone get rich providing liquidity on, like, Link WBTC or whatever the fuck? I don't, like, I don't want that. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So, I I, 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 I'm happy if the fucking incentive token has inferior pump metals and has just good enough pump metals. I'm okay with that. And the liquidity locust that'll come and fucking harvest it, you know, oftentimes are ephemeral, fancy word for go away. Like, they come and they go, you know? So, like, that's why, for me, the incentive token is kind of, like, if if you... Bro, we already have fee-burning mechanisms on trading. We already have fee-burning mechanisms on trading. And it's just... I think the way that I have it in my head will work fine. And I don't see a way, and I don't see a reason to Rube Goldberg the fucking thing to try and make it cooler than, than it needs to be, you know? I don't want it to fucking shine like the other stuff. I don't want it to be as good as the other stuff. I don't want people to be incentivized to provide liquidity to stuff that sucks. Just enough in the beginning to show them a better way is my, is my gut feel. 
Thanks, Rich. And it may end up just being awesome anyway because crypto is weird like that. That it will be more of luck than it will be like. Or it, if it happens, it ain't going to be because some Rube, Rube Goldberg bullshit. And for you guys that don't know what Rube Goldberg is, it just means like overly complicated ways to do normal shit. But thank you for the ideas. I, I do appreciate them. Psych and then Hexbridge. It's uh, pronounced side effects, by the way. Side effects and then Hexbridge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, um, Richard, I fucking love you, man. I'm really good friends with uh, SJ, which nice. you're familiar with. Yeah. Uh, She's hot and she loves Sci-Vive. I'm going to so. fuck a few questions. There you about go. Do it. Um, how do you know Gridlock? I, he's just been a hexagon for a long time. So yeah. he was in like the chat from like way back when, like first couple months, I think. Nice, man. Ryan is a good guy. Um, he's good music, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. I mean, you... He's I, no Ghidra, but I still like him. Yeah, guy, yeah, Ghidra, Ghidra. You, you love your pronunciations, bro. Right you're you're like brain. the fucking typograph police, but on voice chat. Nice. Yeah. Um. So you're familiar with Jade? Eat Brain? Yeah. Oh, Deep Brain is a, they do really cool, uh, like, YouTube videos. I know them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eat Brain, yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, Jade runs Eat Brain. Uh, Great music. It was Great work. Was on. Love it. Um, yeah, the Gidra Eat Brain shit was great. I've listened to it a bunch of times. Hell yeah. Um, fuck. So although, although I love music, I don't think we're making anybody rich. <laughs> We got any make people rich questions around here? Motherfuckers love money in the bear market, I tell you. I'm here in the bear market trying to just fucking have fun. Hey, well, you came to the right place, bro. The memes are good. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, respect, man. I, Thank you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Ciao. First and foremost, uh, Richard, thank you for being here. Thanks, um, man. It's great to hear your voice. And uh, thank you for being patient and waiting for more questions and it's all good. Uh, I mean, I've look, at some to, point, I'm just going to have to sleep. <laughs> I mean, my I, I've heard you speak to the main goal of really outside the community outreach. And so yeah. I have like, it's kind of a two-part thing. We, we I, call I, them the I'm, unwrecked. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, it's funny you mentioned the word wrecked, but there was, there was an airdrop. Usually you are give foresight about airdrops you like and you don't like. And uh, I there mean, was an airdrop. Maybe. Right, right. Um, Just shill your airdrop, motherfucker. Shill it. No, 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 no. no. Name it. Listen. No, don't judge me yet. All right. This is... Listen. <laughs> the airdrop it seems like it was almost specific for hexagons. Like, they rewarded ETH users based on EIP-1559 fees. And we've seen them be bad. Right. And, so I think and, that the uh, uh, I think that the Hedron one was fine. Like, get your free money. Okay. But well, let me like, hit you with uh, my, my my goal. Go. <laughs> Basically, I say that a for people people have been wanting to hear your opinion. It's it's safe to claim, like if they rewarded they basically refunded ETH fees and. With that, that sounds like I, a scam. That's a scam. Uh, the, the it's a layer one blockchain. It's called EVMOS. But scam. the most important, <laughs> what I Anyone want to do. Anyone that refunds your gas fees is going to fuck you. Why would they give you okay. money? Actual money, like, is like there, writing you a check, like scam. I feel like I can't. I feel like I can't. Yeah, this one might respectfully ask you to shut the fuck up a little. Finish, please. Well, no, I'm, I mean, I'm waiting. The goal... Well, go ahead, of, Rich. I say that... Well, no, I want him to finish shilling this fucking thing. Like, he's not shilling anything. He's trying to explain it's something. It's the <laughs> opposite. It's the opposite. Basically, what I'm suggesting, and we already have a validator on their network. Oh, so you're saying uh, you're trying to prevent people from getting scammed from the shit targeting Hexagon. I'm trying to do at exactly what you want. I'm trying to yeah, we'll, be... We'll, okay, I'll just say it. Hey, Hexagons, you are literally targeted like over and over again by people trying to scam you. 
They give you free shit to try and scam you. <laughs> they say, hey, come it. claim your free coins, and then it's a no. fake front end. Oh. I can Richard, down. Richard. Bridge, I got you, dog. Please. You gotta learn how to just cut through the fat. He wants to launch a validator on Evemos to do their like inner blockchain communication so that Pulse Chain would be roped in with all the other blockchains. Yeah, I don't want that. No, I, I mean, mean if you want to do that, go ahead. You know, but I, it's I don't for care. advertising marketing. It's fine. That's fine. Right. But like, it, if you think that is a successful way, instead of just posting funny JPEGs on Twitter, probably funny JPEGs on Twitter is easier. I think I think right. just recycling. I literally like if you want to unwrap new users, like for instance the meme I just posted today. I just took that shit from Reddit and redid it. I saw that shit on Reddit and I was like, yo, I I think that's funny. I was post it. So like okay. it, I think you'd be better off recycling successful memes from Reddit to to make crypto Twitter laugh. It would be like trying to get in front of the eyeballs of the twenty people that will ever go to the page that shows the validator list to see the weird named validator that you put like with Paul Chan. Uh, it's not my fault like you suck at explaining shit, bro. But well, I'm willing to try. I, like the point of me explaining, I want to try it like one more time because it's, I feel yeah. it's incredibly valuable. Okay. It starts with one validator that his sole aim is to bring users to Pulse and PulseX in the whole ecosystem. Any delegate would get airdropped X, X tokens. Like they're going From to be incentivized. Who's going to be giving away their money? Who's giving away their hacks to people? As a validator, as a percentage of our commission, we can pay for it. We can take a. We don't no, need to get. Fuck that other blockchain. Let them die in obscurity. I don't. They can eat shit. I'd rather post memes. No, fuck their it's blockchain. Not a, fuck their project. It's, fuck their blockchain. Fuck their blockchain. Yes, I know. Fuck it. I want to be validators and steal I'd rather suck their BSC users dick than whatever dick you're mentioning to me. It's not. About I'd rather suck. I'd dick. rather suck off BSC users and give them shit than whatever weird thing you're talking about. Because BSC at least has a lot of users. Nobody else well, does. I'll go, to, I'll go to BSC next. Validators aren't cheap. This is one that... Why wouldn't you just buy hacks? I don't get it. This, is, like this is for onboarding people who are not a part of our ecosystem. They don't even know how to use MetaMask yet. In the Cosmos system, do it, they don't huh? use MetaMask. I don't know. Of all the ways to on-ramp people, this sounds like the most fucked up way. Like validators sounds like a terrible have 20, idea, bro. 20,000 do this. Do this. people. Do this, dude. Listen. Oh, my God. Write this shit the fuck down. Yes, send it to you. someone in the community and have them explain to you why it's a stupid idea. Because I did my part. <laughs> All right, bro. I thank right, you thanks, for trying bro. to market hacks, but this particular way seems like way gayer than just getting a cool car and putting a hack sticker on it. You know? I'd rather it get a cool car get... than a validator. A validator doesn't get paid for by them for me to market to them to take them to us. And I'm going to do it jumping across the ecosystem. I the hope IBC your plan is... works, bro. But off the top of my head, it looks terrible. We'll try this again in a month. Can, I, can I write it again. down and maybe... I want to hear your thoughts. Try it. Being more try clear. It. I gave you my thoughts, but try it. I hope that I see it. All right. Next. Thank next. you for trying to promo <laughs> shit, bro. A for effort. All right. All right. Next. All right, let's go to Angel. Angel, you're up. Yes, Angel is here. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, Richard. I'm glad to be your miss. Please, I want to know, how do you identify gems to invest on? Considering the fact that they say that 80% of tokens are scam projects. I, I, choose to, I choose to invest in my own inventions. <laughs> I think most shit sucks. I don't promote, I promote almost no cryptocurrencies. I promote like. Yeah, three. but what are the metrics? How do you know that this one is gonna survive the stroke of time? And then Most on NFT, fail. how do you separate the JPEG and you the can't. real art? I mean, like you, you just you you like unless you're a developer, you can't do it technically. Unless you're an art connoisseur, I mean, like your question basically is, hey, Richard. How can you help me buy shit you didn't invent? Please give me the secret sauce to buying shit you didn't invent. No. <laughs> I won't tell you. 
If I could tell so you, it's I only tell you. made by Richard that is approved. There you go. Hey, I like <laughs> shit that I build. That's your answer. But but really, like if you if your if your mechanism is to like try and uh, be like a stock picker or whatever, you probably just lose all your money in this in this market, especially during the bear market. Like <laughs> if you're if you're like the bear market is not the time to throw darts at the fucking board. I would not suggest that. Yeah, you're, when you're you keep investing, I used to see when I invest one project, the next moment you will see that there is a classic of that project. You invest in Floki, you see Floki classic, right. Luna, Luna exactly. classic, Saitama, Saitama classic. They keep reducing and making yes. your money. I'm tired. There you really. go. Ethereum classic, uh, not that great. Yeah, I, w I wish I could uh, give you a better answer, but I probably gave you the best answer. You just don't realize it. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to go to Carlos. Yeah, let's go. Hey, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you're good, man. Gotcha. Okay, so I miss Hex, okay? I don't want to miss Pulse X or Pulse Shape. Hold on, hold on. I don't hold understand. How you miss Isn't Hex in like a 90% dip right now? No, How but I miss, a, I miss like the launch. Oh, of course, I'm oh, buying okay. the dip. I'm buying okay. the dip. But I don't right. want to miss like this next Pulse X or Pulse sure. thing. Right. Subscribe to my fucking Twitter and to my uh, Telegram. Okay, but t.me is... slash Richard's calls. Okay, but, but what can we do? I mean, I understand that the sacrifice phase is over. You got to wait until it exists. There's no other way to get access without counterparty risk. Okay, and then when it exists, you just go on and buy it? Uh, I mean, pretty much. You, you could, yes. I mean, you might have to bridge in. It depends on where your money is, right? Like, if you have enough already on the forked over stuff, you can trade some of your other forked over stuff since you're already on the chain. But if you need to get from, like, the ETH chain over to the HEX chain or the Pulse chain, then you, you know, need to bridge over. So it's okay. either going to be direct or it's going to be a bridge. I mean, that's a dynamic I don't understand. Where, where it's okay. Where do you learn it? Why don't you practice on the test net right now and pretend that the test net was a real net and try and buy some and see what happens? Okay, but how can I get like money on the test net? Because I'm already connected. You probably already net. have money on the test net. You just don't realize it. Did you have money when the test net fork block happened? Did you have money on Ethereum like uh, eight months ago? I can't remember how old the test net snapshot is, but I'm going to just guess eight months. Okay, yeah. So I just got the wallet that I had Ethereum on. To the test net and i should see the money yep. there yeah you might have to add some of the erc20s or whatever but yeah like okay. go use the test net for sure everybody on this call and in the, the pulse chain chat room can help you use test net yeah carlos follow me real quick i'll send you to some links you can do uh try pulsechain.com it'll it'll give you a step-by-step -step setup and in, right into the test net there's a free yeah. uh, uh test pulse uh, site that you can link up to um, we help a lot of people just getting into testnet. You want to practice, <laughs> practice, practice for just for game day. And once again, notice that his question basically is, "How do I participate?" Which is the best question anyone can ask. Absolutely. So you're the ideal target for these spaces. Thank Absolutely. you for the wonderful question. I hope that we uh, answered it. I mean, basically, you're going to use testnet. And okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to help. I want to learn. I just followed yep. you, Ben. So you got it, man. Just okay. DM Sounds me good, and bro. I'll send you the links and we'll get you going. Okay. All right, guys. A couple Thank more you. and then I'm fucking All right, I'm Kim trolling Jones. Twitter a bit and bet. sleeping. You bet. Tangent, you know the drill. Bring bring your A game, bud. Hey, Tangent, the Bitcoin you're, Maxi. With the hot girls Richard. everywhere. The hotness. <laughs> when are you going to send some of them hotnesses my way, brother? Anytime. Anytime. You want to have to fucking come down to where you're at, don't I? <laughs> one day, yeah, bro. One day, friend. it should happen. Um, you know, I've got big love and respect for you, man. I but with, with regards to BTC adoption, sure. you have been quote you have been quoted as saying, "How many world's richest guys have you got left to buy in?" And whenever mm -hmm. I hear you say that, I'm thinking, bro, like the rest of his stack, the rest of the rich list, and that comment also applies to institution and nation and nation states, right? So but why would you be my... so mean to those guys and get them to buy the top of an S curb limp dick slow but, piece of shit? But do you hate them? In my opinion, like? it, in my opinion, we're not at the end of the S curve. We're at the start. Like so, 
-hmm. But the chart says your opinion is wrong. The chart literally is falling over. Like, literally. In, in on my every opinion, time frame. You're the lowest under the 200 moving average that you've ever been. I've got I've got different charts that say perfect. otherwise in, ter in terms of in terms of the adoption. Like there's less than two percent of the world's the adoption population. Doesn't matter. Even bro. Whole, whole all, all anyone cares about is the price. No one gives a fuck how many wallet installs you have. People just care about the price. So, I'm not so, buying this. I hope so that I hope other people install wallets. I'm buying it because I want the price to go up. Richard, you, you have said that like you know you know how you've made comments that. Bitcoiners lie unnecessarily sure. in the past because the truth about Bitcoin is already good enough. Mm -hmm. My I'm not lying about that, Bitcoin. It's all the it, truth, bro. You just think I'm lying because you misunderstand but if, Bitcoin. But if Hex is really sucks. better than it's Bitcoin, you, so I, I want... Ethereum I want is to way better than Bitcoin in like every measurable way. Richard, every I want to update... Fucking way. Richard, I want to... I want to update your worldview. I want to convince yep. you right. and the next community that a discussion with me about this, so let's about just Bitcoin. Do the discussion now. We don't have to kick the kid out on the road. I'm ready. Let's get to it. But, but, but the thing is, so with this space, is I don't want to. I don't want to take everyone else's question time. Why don't we have a no? You're just afraid I'm going to fuck you up on, right here, and you're not no, ready yet. Really <laughs> no, I'm re Richard. <clears throat> Richard, I've been ready. I've been ready for over a month and uh, for well, months. Just do and it. so we, Let's go, we man. can do give this me, right. Give me your three remaining points that I haven't Let's fucked go. up yet. I'm ready. Everyone, drop part do of it. Do oh do it. shit! <laughs> fuck. Let me just open up my other shit. All right. It's fine. Take your time, bro. It's fine. I was a Bitcoin maxi before niggas even understood Bitcoin existed. Like I fucking, I, I, I was on the other side of this shit. Like I know the ropes. I know all the pro Bitcoin points. I've heard them from everybody a hundred times. There's not a single pro Bitcoin point I don't fucking know in and out. But I'm ready to hear right, your so, subset. Okay, let's do it. Let's do so, it, man. So I guess the the first thing I wanted to do if we had done this on YouTube is. I want I want to disclose to everyone that I own both Bitcoin and Hex, sure. and that I've got more Hex than Bitcoin in dollar value, right? But similar orders of magnitude. So just just okay. just so that people know in terms of like where I'm at and, and any biases that I might hold, and also that I pled with heaps of big name Bitcoiners to step up and challenge you, <laughs> like, and and so to basically to have this debate with you, like yeah. properly, like once. Ones that know, ones that know their shit, though, right? So, yeah. I I believe that m most, if not all of them, are basically fearful of reputational damage from one no, of three they're things. They're terrified from of one being of three fucking things. annihilated. Like I annihilated that dude with the raccoon eyes that lives in Australia. Whatever the fuck his name was. Yeah, yeah, but so like, I, I just let me drop, I, let me I, drop I, these I, three. Yeah. Let me drop these three reasons on you. See if you agree, right? These are the three reasons yeah. why I think people. Like the, the the actual quality maxis but like, but, but hold on, that but actually hold on, hold on, hold on. understand. So you took something that should have made me look awesome, which was like I crushed everyone on their squad, and then you turn it into an insult, which was like no, I no 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 I admit no no I missed like I admit that I admit I admit you okay. have been absolutely crushing. However, Thank you. I believe I believe there are people out there who who actually would do a much better job including myself and including some other btc max go ahead i'm happy and i'm happy i'm glad you're here let's go i'm ready all right all right let's do it so you don't want to hear the reasons why i think they're scared to debate you the, it like, doesn't, i don't the, mind it yeah tell me go ahead the quality max is right so one i think that they're either concerned that they'll basically be extending credibility to you <laughs> or, or no, the guys whose coin is down seventy two percent right now. Those guys, they're worried about me. Well, My shit's up two hundred and seventy x versus their shit, dog. They're worried about me. Let, let me let me get you into their mindset. The guys that promoted they, all their show they, links to BlockFi and Celsius, those guys. If they genuinely believe that you are who? a scammer, just tell which me I do not think that. Just tell me who. But, why, why not just tell me who they, they are? If they believe that, well, there there are there are maxis out there that actually understand like. All the energy fud, proof of work versus proof of stake. There are guys out there. Yeah. 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 So like Safedine blocked me. Adam Beck is scared. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, yeah. Fluffy's and on my the, team. So 
fucking. I'm uh, giving you the reasons. I'm giving you the reasons why I think that they refuse that they're refusing to get on stream with you or you and me. Yes, you do this. They're just ad hominems. But go ahead and get get them out of your system. Let's go. So that was I, number tell one. Me why was I suck. I'm ready. Let's go. One was extending credibility. Two was that they haven't looked deeply enough into Hex to have actually any intelligent criticisms okay. of it. All right. And number three is that they see you as such a master of framing that they believe that they will appear to look like they lost the debate regardless of the actual outcome. Sure, okay. Yeah, I, I, so, I, I'm sure they think these things. They also think Bitcoin's cool. So we already know there's something wrong with them. Like, and they, lo they love Bitcoin. But I also love Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin's cool. I still think it's legit. But but bro, so, it's not. It sucks shit. <coughs> measurably, well, like. Well, that's all right. Well, I guess that's what we're going to find so out. That's so what let's we're here go, to debate, so let's right? Let's go. So so let's let's go through this right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. Like, right? so, okay. So I think I think that you continue to attack Bitcoin too harshly. Nope. And mm -mm. Nope. I'm the only motherfucker saving everybody from themselves, bro. You guys all drank the Kool Aid. You bought a Richard, fucking S curve you... top. And you're holding it. Do you like, really? Oh, it's not the top. Do you it's really the the believe S that Bitcoin is garbage? Do you really believe yes. that it is no good? It's not legit. Truly, bro. One time I waited like six hours for a single confirmation or some shit. It might but, even been thirteen but, hours. It was some. It's not like that anymore, Richard. Time. It is like the, that. The mempool. No, the mempool has been fined for for like over a year. We've got the Lightning Network now. No, it, it, you don't have so to wait dumb. hours Everything for confirmation. Everything wrong. Everything you just said is so wrong. I'm going to shove this down your throat so fucking hard. The mempool's been fine the for years. The goddamn mempool has no effect on a Poisson distribution whatsoever. The goddamn mempool has no effect on the 10-minute fucking average block finding whatsoever. It is totally 100% fucking tangential, orthogonal, unfucking related. I understand mm -hmm. these things better than you do, or you would have already known that math. That's, the that's not true, though, because when the mempool is full, it can push it in the other direction. The it, can make it, it, can, it can make it take longer. No, it can't. So when the mempool's empty, when the mempool's empty, it only it can't if go you're not at the head of the minutes. mempool. Don't you think I was at the head of the fucking mempool? <clears throat> yes, I was. I wasn't waiting because other people in front of me. I was waiting because no blocks were found. It doesn't matter your fucking rank in the mempool when there's no blocks being found because you only find blocks once every 10 minutes and the Poisson distribution occasionally shoves your fucking block wait time into the fucking 13-hour fucking land. And it is unaffected by goddamn mempool and is unaffected by hash rate. It's purely a fucking effect of the Poisson distribution applied to a 10% average weight. It's a See? shitty, slow as fuck technology, and it's the reason why when you go to deposit your money on exchange, if you use fucking Ethereum instead of fucking Bitcoin, they'll let you fucking trade twice as fast fucking everywhere. It's fucking obvious and fucking provable. But for some reason, guys that have bags of Bitcoins are immune to facts. <clears throat> I'm telling you how long I waited. It sucked. And that was for a single that confirmation. I needed more than one. That sounds to me like it would have been an, an anomaly for six hours. It is an like, anomaly. I've never heard, it's of, I've never heard of that for little, No, but it happens all the time. How many, like, how many confirmations do these mofos want? How many, like no, but, the person you're sending it to? Most conversations are, are, listen, it's very simple. Ignoring the outlier randomly having to wait nearly forever for a goddamn block to be found. Fine. Okay? Do you want to wait twice as long to put your money on exchange? Or not. Okay, if you don't want to wait twice as long, use fucking Ethereum. Do you want to mix your coins before you fucking deposit them so that everyone doesn't know your entire fucking balance? Then use Ethereum because you've got Tornado Cash. Do you want to de-risk without counterparty risk into a stable coin? Well, then use fucking Ethereum because there ain't no stable coins on Bitcoin. Do you want to buy a gay-ass NFT? Use Ethereum. You want to buy Hex? Use Ethereum. You want to fucking... Richard, Richard. Like, it's all Richard. Ethereum and there's no Bitcoin. There's Bitcoin sucks shit. You can't do anything with it. Nothing. Richard, it, if you look at transaction finality, Bitcoin is Scam. actually faster Scam. than these Wrong. other than these Wrong. other chains. Wrong. So they sound Wrong. like they're having Wrong. more confirmations. Wrong. Okay. Okay. Wrong. Educate me. Because yes, because the only motherfucker you're ever transacting with is that exchange. You ain't buying shit with your Bitcoin. If you are buying shit with your Bitcoin, you're waiting six confirmations anyway. I so, buy shit with Bitcoin. Yeah, and you're waiting six confirmations anyway, and that's as final as it needs to be. 
And if you want that, if you're giving a fuck about your chain weight, motherfucking energy use, then you can just wait longer on Ethereum. And, and by the way, since you're going to pull out like, oh, how much miners make is security. How much are fucking Ethereum miners making compared to Bitcoin miners? I think Ethereum miners make more. So if you're going to tell me that the fucking most I'm secure chain sure. is the chain that the miners make the most on, I think that the Ethereum miners make more than Bitcoin miners now because they're getting so much fucking fees. The fees Ethereum miners make are what, a hundredfold the fees Bitcoin miners make? And that's the fee market the correct, that secures Bitcoin, I right? The, I don't think that's the correct metric for security. It should, it should be energy used, it's not, your not metric how you much money me. people are making. That's the metric you just gave me. That's the reason you're talking about finality. Oh, okay. Finality yeah, yeah, is economic finality. That's right, what right. finality I'm gonna, is. All right, I'm going to consider how much energy do you have to shit into the chain to not roll the chain back. And by the way, when's the last time you heard of someone getting fucking the chain rolled back and losing their money on Ethereum? When did that? When did that last happen? The carbon vote when they took the hackers' money away. It's like Richard. Like, I'm gonna. I'm going to concede this point to you, so A, that we All can right. move on, and B, because no, I don't no. believe that this is, I don't believe that this destroys Bitcoin's value prop, like as in... No, but that's a straw you, you know man. What I'm no, saying? One's, like, no one's argument, no one's argument here is that Bitcoin has no value prop. The argument is that Ethereum shits all over Bitcoin in every fucking possible measurable metric. All of that, right. everything. Okay. Transaction Richard, through, Richard. transaction speed, transaction latency, features, never having an inflation bug. Having a bug bounty program. Like, it's fucking infinite ass kickage in every possible metric. I, I, don't, I don't agree, but let's, let's, do you want, should we move on to proof of work versus proof yeah. of stake? Uh, why so, don't, no, see, here's the thing. People care about no, no, getting rich, man. I'm and giving like, you the point. I'm, I'm conceding the point. going to pump I'm harder here. and this, this esoteric technical shit that no one can make any money on, it, it just irritates people to hear about it. No, no, I, I agree with so, you. Okay, proof I, of stake sucks. Richard, Show me where guys lost money on it. Richard, Rich, Richard, when, whenever I, I say frequently, if all you care about Matt is mad gains, then go hex. I've, I've only ever defended Bitcoin on other areas that I believe that are important for cryptocurrency to survive as a whole. So, okay. so in my opinion, in my opinion, so what's even though you're a Bitcoin so, or Ethereum. It's it's definitely Bitcoin because proof of stake is unproven. Like sorry, Ethereum sorry, sorry, sorry. Assuming that proof of stake. I know I know Ethereum's not currently proof of stake, but like as in it's gonna go there. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna see yeah, dude you hey come so on. At the moment, so at, no, no, so at, at the moment, at the moment, I would prefer I would prefer my money to be pure monetary premium and not trying to do all this other shit. So I would still choose Bitcoin. You're crazy, just dude. In terms of in just so in terms Bitcoin of, that's had two inflation bugs and no no bug bounty programs, you'll take over Ethereum. There's no inflation bugs and a bug bounty program. Well, in my opinion, Bitcoin has a bug bounty program. It's it's the amount of money that's within the network that you can steal and the bug bounty above. program. The bug bounty program is when you lose your money. <laughs> that's not a good bug bounty program. I, I, well, look, I'll agree with you. I'll agree with you that that's that's tragic, but that. That no, bro, like, style of bug bounty program has been running the whole time. Bugs not, not like totally show you what a scam it is. They had two. Ethereum had none. Most coin, like, I, I just, bro, they so, literally so, but, failed twice. Like, what do you want? Do you least, what are you waiting but for? But do you at least admit? Do you at least admit that that with Bitcoin, you don't have all of these other potential threat vectors through? No, because you're. Misunderstanding the, the complexity of the system. Are. You're, you're not like, getting it, dude. You're like, not do you, getting do you it. Do you seriously believe that the world would adopt a world reserve currency that's got all this like nonsense built on top of it? Yes, I do, because that's what the dollar is. The dollar but, has a lot of fucking nonsense built on it, and that's why people like it. They want the not nonsense. Direct, the nonsense no, not directly, future. though. Not within the technology stack. It's not. I'm that's telling indirect. you, people prefer the nonsense. They want it desperately. Which is why, like, Ethereum has all the users and Bitcoin doesn't. Well, so why, is why, Bitcoin so, why is Bitcoin so far ahead in actual adoption being used as... Because it's four or like, five times older? Yeah, so, so you do admit that the Lindy effect is... on ramp users? So you do admit that the Lindy effect is something where Bitcoin is winning no, that battle, right? No, 
No, being around longer is not the Lindy effect. I'm older than you, probably. Does that mean the Lindy effect means I'm cooler than you? It's a very stupid argument. That's not yes, what the Lindy no. effect means. No, what the Lindy effect specifically states is that something that has been around for a long time is more likely to be around. It makes no fucking call to superiority to other things that are old. It is not, it's not a measurement of quality. It's a measurement of fucking likelihood to exist. Bitcoin can continue to exist with the price flat for the next 100 years. Flat. If we just look, if we just look at Bitcoin's <laughs> achievements compared to every other cryptocurrency in its adoption, where but, but, it matters. Hold on a second. Furthermore, in terms of hold on, in terms how, of, I, I'm going back to Lindy because I want you to understand how wrong you are about shit. You were very okay, wrong okay. about the Poisson distribution. You're very wrong about the Lindy effect. I conceded the, the point Lindy on effect the on the first would have you believe that on. every piece of old technology would beat every piece of new technology because you're using it wrong. You would be betting on MySpace to beat Facebook because you're using it wrong. That's not how the Lindy effect is meant to be used. You are using it wrong. That is it. Okay, all right. Despite where, so whether or not I'm using that particular like comment incorrectly, do do you not agree that Bitcoin we have a way to, is we have further a along, for adoption is further along than any other crypto in in the path to world reserve currency? No, it's been adopted. Wrong. It's been adopted by nation states. No. It's... Dude, it's like, absolutely not. When Ethereum flips okay. Bitcoin, okay. What coin, you're going to be what like, wait a second. Further? There's no second best. There's no... Oh, shit. There is a second best. It's called Bitcoin. And then there'll be a third best. It'll be called Bitcoin. And then there'll be a fourth best. And that'll be called Bitcoin. Because it's trash. It is not good technology. It is slow. It is expensive. And it has no features. And it has no roadmap. They're not even adding features to the fucking thing. It, it's, it's, it's the shittiest crypto you can buy. You waited five years. Five years to be down. Down for five years. And Richard, by the way, your all-time high was 3.5x. You want to know every other shit coin's all-time high was? It wasn't 3.5x. It was like, you know, 3,000x. But, you're, but you're buying the, thing, the top the of an S curve, and I can't explain it to you like any more clearly. Prices, I get it. Prices and gains and X's do not prove that things are or aren't scams. On e in either direction, price going up doesn't prove that something's not a scam, and price going down does not prove that something is a scam. So, so really, for this discussion, so you're Bitcoin the thing that I'm talking about, crazy. price is irrelevant. I can't believe you just called Bitcoin a scam. That's crazy. No, I, what I didn't call Bitcoin a scam. It's not a scam. Yeah, but its price went up. It yeah, but no, 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 don't. No, no but you see what I'm you, saying. You, I'm you, Richard, you know what I said. Right? Like, you know what I said. No, I know. I, I know. There's I that in the negative. The fucking price went up and went straight down again. I'm but saying. I can I'm tell saying you this. Doesn't... <clears throat> what happens if Bitcoin does a 95 percent dip? Do you stop acting holier than thou? Then is that when you yeah, fucking look, yeah, figure yeah, out that it's just another shit coin? There's a point. Bitcoin is another shit coin, but you don't realize it. The founder fucking abandoned it, by the way. Bitcoin is an abandoned, foundered shitcoin run by fucking corporate fucks at Blockstream. Scumbags. Richard. Pumped by scumbags that took leverage with other people's money to buy the fucking top. It's a scumbag coin full of assholes. And, by the way, the people that get rich in it, okay, are venture capitalists. Who do you think is rich on, on Bitcoin? Tim Draper. Who may not even be a bad guy. He might be a nice guy, but he's a he's a venture capitalist. Fucking Balaji. Uh Naval, not not Naval, who's the other dude? Uh fucking the dude that ran all the scam fucking uh not Balaji. Who's the other Indian dude that has all the fucking the the stupid pump and dumps in the normal stock market? Shamas. Yeah, Chamath Palitia. That you guy, go. you're making him rich. You're making Sailor rich, the convicted fucking fraudster that settled with the SEC. You're making the fucking Winklevi twins rich, the trust fund boys from, uh, from fucking... Uh, they live in the Hamptons. You're making all those guys rich. Bitcoin is the fucking venture capitalist scam coin. You are exit liquidity for Sailor is what you are. But you don't get it. The, the coin with no... When I was in Bitcoin, it was us versus the fucking man. 
That's what it was. It was the gold bugs and the freedom-loving libertarians taking power away from the fucking man. And Bitcoin is not that anymore and hasn't been for fucking years. And I don't understand why people don't see it. It, bl it like blows my mind. Richard Andreas okay. Antonopoulos can't even get anyone to watch his goddamn streams, and he turned out to be a prick anyway. All right, well, I want to move on to someone who's building a... Um, no, hold on, dude. I want to finish this Bitcoin shit. Yeah, dude. This is fun and going. exciting and shit. Keep it going. This is awesome. no, everyone else is going to ask me noob questions anyway. This is a good argument. Okay, good. And, and you guys that are holding Bitcoin in the chat that are upset about what I'm telling you, fuck you. I'm the one that tried to fucking help you and have been telling you to shit for years. You're the one holding the limp dick, slow piece of crap with no fucking roadmap, making the man rich. Fuck you guys. I'm trying to help you be better people. But anyway, go ahead. I like he's a hexagon. I like him. He's a good dude. Yeah, but he good. just likes Bitcoin more than I do. I used to like Bitcoin, but then I learned there was better shit. I don't like it. If the better shit didn't exist, I'd go back to liking it. There's better shit. So, like, bro, when you want to be anonymous in Bitcoin, what do you do? Did he give up? Did you guys mute him? The fuck? Where's my debate partner? No way, man. The only way that he would have been dropped is oh, wait, all right. these so, shitty... Sorry, sorry. Someone, my mic. someone turn my mic off. Um, right. So, look, look, so... Yeah, I, I said um, Lightning Network coin mixing. Like, so okay, you understand you, the Lightning Network is not Bitcoin, right? It's a different code base with different developers with different security model. But it's still trustless. It's still trustless. Like, it's not. It's not like a. It's not like a centralized I side don't chain. Or that anything. shit at all, dude. Your original it's, it's, chain it's, it's, ain't it's, trustless. It's, 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 that shit's been hacked a few times. So I don't trust your level two. Oh, we promised this ain't got no bugs. Bullshit. I don't trust that. <laughs> You think Sorry. I trust young little Jack Mahlers on TV saying stupid shit to put my life savings in his little invention? I don't. Richard. He didn't invent Do lightning. You? No, true. He just made a wallet. Fine. But like, I don't believe in it, dude. I don't trust it. Do you Do you admit? How many audits you're... do you have for the lightning network? Show me your audits. And if you don't have anyone, you're scamming. It's really that easy. If you don't have no, audits, no, you're the... fucking scamming. Not really. The network functioning and not getting hacked and having economic energy. To, if it's if it's did you guys just have world critical vulnerabilities energy. like last year? You had critical vulnerabilities in Lightning like last year. But but it's always been considered to be early stage development, and that, that that's why they have limits on how much you can well, put on there and stuff. They say right, don't. Dude. Well, look, it's, when that shit doesn't suck that bad, maybe I'll fork it for my shit since it's open source, right? Yeah, that's cool. Like. Okay. So, just so, want you to know that, like, if it works we, out good, it's going to work out better for me than y'all. Richard, do you admit that because you have your own projects, pro project projects, hex, etc., that your opinions are going to be bias? Like, do you sure. admit a bias in in yeah. your in your opinions against Bitcoin? Yep. Yeah, I'm extremely biased, but you know what? I'm also extremely truthful. And luckily, my bias and my truth are lined up. Like, I, like, dude, if if appeal to bias is your best argument, you've lost. No, 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 no. Facts, I just, man. no, I just wanted to, I just wanted to establish that in terms of just a, no, but like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just kind of giving you the point because I don't care. But in reality, I might not actually be biased. Like, I talk shit against NFTs all the time, even though NFT guys would benefit greatly from Paul's chain. I talk shit about, like, I, I talk, I talk shit about Bitcoin. That's even minor, Richard, that's buying. minor. In terms of impact to your net wealth and, and reputation, et cetera, that's a very minor item. How the, how the item fuck is here for 30 for 40 minutes saying nice things about Ethereum helping my bags? I'm, I'm here telling you the truth. I am, I'm very clearly and obviously shilling bags that are not mine. I'm not, I'm not fucking profiting from shilling Ethereum to you, dude. It's just the truth. And it's been the truth for a long fucking time. And I, like, here's the thing I don't get. I, I, I like slam dunk you with shit and then you just like rotate to the next thing. People can deposit yeah. to exchanges and transact at twice the rate with Ethereum Richard, that they can with Bitcoin. Isn't that cool? Richard, you can you can assume that whenever I move on to a new topic, I'm just literally conceding the point of the last one to you just for the purpose okay. of, of moving things on. All right. Oh, cool. All right. Cool. We'll, we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll just establish but like, that. But just a, but going, just going a back, quick summary. Going, like, going quickly. I think... 
I say all these really cool features that Ethereum has that Bitcoin doesn't, and then you tell me some esoteric argument about chain weight and finality that no one gives a fuck about. And it's like you're losing so badly, but it's like not obvious no, to you. And I want you to I, realize no. that like if we're keeping score, you're really not doing a good job for Bitcoin because Bitcoin's not doing a good job for you. Don't worry, Richard. I'll get there. I'll get I'll get okay. points back on the board for sure. So right. I want to step back. I want to step back to that list of people that you had yeah. saying sa saying that these are the people that are gonna get rich. I I, want, I genuinely want your opinion on this. The sure. Bitcoiners have got have got this idea of the immaculate conception of Bitcoin, and that that's hilarious. And that and that and that yo know, that Satoshi disappearing was a good thing, and the idea hilarious. is the idea is that <clears throat> when if your so, dad left you it, when you're young, it would be good to say that that was like awesome because it made you stronger. But in actual framing error, sucks. frame framing error. Look, check this out, right? Bitcoin was created when no one had an idea that you could get rich being a crypto coin founder. Oh my and, God. And the Bitcoin Maxi's, the Bitcoin oh Maxi's argument is that every coin that has been created since, the founder knew, including you, that you can get oh mad rich, like Louis Vuitton Lambo rich, off creating a coin, right? So Satoshi created the invention, and then obviously when he heard that like shit was going to like the CIA and shit, uh, what was it, Gavin went to CIA, he, he disappeared. So that so that there wouldn't be a single point of failure having a like a leader and then like he burnt his keys, right? And then so, he burnt so his no keys, door, right? So no doors to kick kick in. And then he burnt well, his he keys, could, right? He, he could have died. He could have died. It could have been Hal Finney and he could have died. Right, but he, I agree he, he left, he abandoned the project, and he burnt his keys. Oh no, no, he didn't do that. He just actually abandoned it and kept his keys. Lol. See, you got well, abandoned. You got like fucked someone, by your founder, and then like no, no, someone could die. Cool. Someone could die before. Sometimes you die before you're expecting to die. He might not have known he was about to die, especially if yeah. You're I, I, I support that, but you're making bitch ass coward behavior seem cool, and it's bitch ass coward shit. The theory, like Vitalik, is not the hardest core of dudes. He's not like doing martial arts and bodybuilding and shit. He doesn't have a squad of dudes protecting him. He's basically like a fucking twig that gets up on stage. <laughs> And he's Richard, a founder. I'll give you my I'll give you my theory on this. I'll give you my theory on this. You can you can destroy it or, or attempt to. Bitcoin provides an umbrella of protection against uh, for all other projects because governments know that even though they can take out these smaller projects either with like however whatever the threat vector, while you've got Bitcoin existing and not able to be taken down properly, like properly like fully taken out. There's no point attacking these smaller projects that actually are vulnerable because Bitcoin sure. is still going to exist, giving I, people I like the freedom that, that they that they I agree deserve. With that. I agree with so, that, and that, and you so, can keep doing that with a flat ass price chart for the rest of time. And I appreciate it. Thanks. Like yes, cool. continue okay. taking heat. I, I I like it, but like that doesn't mean anyone should buy your shit. It's like thanks, and thanks for the code, and thanks for like the ideas and shit, and. I'm sure Satoshi thanked all the open source projects that he jacked or used rather to make his like Level DB, Berkeley DB, QT, uh, TCP IP stack. Like I'm, I'm sure he fucking helped everyone out too. Like, bro, like everybody's inspired by that which came before them. Like, yes, Bitcoin was first. Yes, Bitcoin takes heat. Yes, Bitcoin has regulatory fucking. They're trying to make the laws better and shit. And I appreciate all that. All that. That's great. But that doesn't mean that I have to say that the technology doesn't suck because it does, or the community doesn't suck because it does, or the price chart doesn't suck because it does. The price chart sucks, the technology sucks, the community sucks, the features suck, the roadmap sucks. Like, it all sucks. And yes, I'm glad they're doing some regulatory shit nice. And I'm glad their nodes don't go down that much. And the, and the pollution also sucks. And the mining hardware companies suck. I'm I'm glad you like my theory about the umbrella protection. I thought that you was just nice. mentioned mining. That was a good point. You, you just you you just mentioned mining um, hardware. That is one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Is sure. you've talked in the past about ASIC centralization. You know, yeah. companies in China that you can't talk to, et cetera, et cetera. And Sucks. I wanted to try and up. I wanted to try and update you on that. That now now we've got Samsung, Intel creating ASICs. Some of the Chinese manuf um, ASIC manufacturers were you. at Bitcoin Miami 2022. I don't what believe you, you. What do you mean you don't believe me? That's 
It's, I like, mean, look at I see all S fucking seven, S nine, S whatever the fuck, S things everywhere, and that's like all the hash rate is all S shit from Bitmain. So oh, yeah, like, yeah, but, but, like, when that changes, these... I'll update my fucking worldview. But like, I've heard rumors of Intel having a mining chip for like seven fucking years, and and Samsung's not going to allocate the fucking rare ass space they have for chips in a global chip shortage. To shitty down seventy five percent fucking Bitcoin. It's not going to happen. They're okay, out of so fabs. Yeah, okay. We're limited by fabs. I, I guess my main point is that some of these things are constantly improving, and you even no, even but, with um but they're not even you with wish they were. Samsung putting a fucking blockchain wallet on a phone and then us never hearing about it again didn't actually make anything better. It was fake. I agree with that. You hearing about Intel having one chip that no one's ever going to use and they're never really going to make, it didn't actually make anything better. It's just the only talking point you've got because it's a little news going on. So that shouldn't even be memorable. It shouldn't be mentionable. But there's so other little shit going on that it actually no, breaks through the noise and you hear about it. There's nothing my else main, going on. My main, point, my main point is that the trend is towards improvement on nice. some of the things that you have criticized Bitcoin of. It's not. You've got two or three places to buy Bitcoin miners today, and that's it. And they're probably all unprofitable. So, so now what? You you couldn't even buy a miner and be profitable now anyway. So, so I don't so understand. I don't like, where's the good? Show me what. Where's the good part? It sucks. So block, block are planning to open source their chip data sheet. But we've had chip. We've had open sourced fucking chips for a while, and like to no effect. It, it didn't matter. Also, also, I, I, I admit that you're limited you're by the is... goddamn fabs. You can do whatever you want with your design bullshit and your distribution bullshit. You're literally limited by the fabs. It's whoever can get their tape out from the fucking fab by by hook or by crook or by suck or fuck or however they're doing it. Like, huh. it's a terribly forced to be centralized market because in the end, you're gated through a few fucking chip manufacturers. No matter what you do on your side. You're you're just they're they're not going to tape you out. Well, I guess I guess from my perspective, what I'm seeing is an increased number of countries. There are sort of there. Are, I, I know I know I I like what you're saying about. I mean, look, getting believe China it, out believe of mining it when you was see probably it. good. I, mean, I'll, I'll, I think getting China out of mining was good, probably. Yes, and I think agree. getting it into America is good, probably, maybe. But like. Having more countries maybe would have been better. You know, maybe having mining in China would have been better if Bitcoin, fucking America banned it. But now it's not in China. So now it's like, I mean, you really haven't grasped at straws for this limp dick price chart, man. Like, why should I have to care about all this drama bullshit? Why doesn't the price just go up and everything work good? Why do I have to worry about the next inflation bug? I don't worry about the next inflation bug with Ethereum. It's never had one. But Bitcoin, but I worry. The answer to that question is because if you if you genuinely believe in the mission statement of cryptocurrency to bring increased freedom to the world, that's not you need, no, you I, need I, to I don't care about more than just the price chart. No, you need that to is care not about what Bitcoin was designed just for. That is a sociological fucking bullshit kumbaya no. feeling thing injected into the white paper that wasn't there. Bitcoin only makes rich people rich. Do you know why? Because you buy it with money, and the only people that have money already have money. That's the reason I was rich when I bought Bitcoin, and lo and behold, now I'm rich now. And Roger Ver was rich when he bought Bitcoin, and Tim Draper was rich when he bought Bitcoin. And the people that got the richest on this shit were already rich to start with because you buy it with fucking money. It's a money amplifier. And so, like, any sociological, political, this is going to make shit better, uh-uh. And by the way, I mean, look at who really has big bags. The plus token fucking guys had like what a hundred thousand Bitcoin. The Mount Gox guys have a hundred and forty thousand fucking Bitcoin. The fucking scammers who scam Bitfinex had a few billion in Bitcoin. There's some real fucking trash ass motherfuckers with big ass bags of Bitcoin. And you know, you know that you know the coin centralization is not a problem, right? Like you, you preach that about hex. No, but like people. So, so why does it matter that listen, these guys have got big bags? Well, I like good people to have more money. Like, I'm, I'm happy if Roger has money. He seems like a good guy. But if the fucking hacker of Phoenix has more money, I'm not excited about that. 
Oh, so, so your, we your have, opinion is that, that you, you, have you less trust of, you, but you don't trust them to have big bags. Like as in, I, I trust <laughs> that there are less hackers with giant bags of hacks because in in my looking at it, hackers that hack hexagons dump that shit for stable. And then in, in fucking other world, oh, okay. Bitcoin no, worlds, no bad actors, like as in as in provable bad actors, right? And saying. then in in Bitcoin world, when hackers fucking get their Bitcoin bag, they hold that shit, and it becomes worth more and more and more over time because they can't get out of it because it's all centralized fuckery. Because yeah, you don't yeah, have I any see, freedom. I, think, in I see the difference. I thought right. you were just pointing to people who are large holders, but I see what you're saying. No, like, I like venture capitalists usually. But most people don't. So as a rhetorical tactic, it's okay to mention that because they care, even though I might not. I like people that build shit. I mean, not every venture capitalist is of the same quality, but like, look, Tim Draper wants to secede from California. That sounds awesome. You know, he seems like seems like maybe he's a cool guy. Chamath Palipte is scamming the shit out of people. He seems like a faggot. You know, uh, <laughs> Balaji, he would, did a biotech startup. At least he made some progress in medicine. Okay, you know. Like, not every VC is of the same fucking merit in my book. So I'm, I'm just saying, like, in Bitcoin, you've got a lot of, as you said, known bad actors with billions of dollars of that shit. And that's not a problem that we have in any of my projects. And, and it's a, it is an actual real problem. That guy that hacked Finex had, you know, what, $2 billion? Because he couldn't get out of it because Bitcoin sucks. Hackers that hack Bitcoin hate life because they can't get out of it. And if they try to get out of it, they get caught. Hackers that hack Ethereum shit, at least they get to keep the money they took because they have the freedom to get the fuck out of it. I can't tell you how much better Ethereum is than fucking Bitcoin. It's crazy. Oh, man. But Tyler got to come it, over here and suck me it, off for all this fucking it, work I'm doing, shilling his bags. It really, it it really, really hurts bag. my feelings. It, it really hurts to hear you say that. Why? Can, Ethereum's awesome. Can we What's do wrong it? Ethereum? In fact, in fact, seeing it, seeing as we're talking about Ethereum, and since they're eventually going to go to proof of stake, and obviously hey, Pulse Chain is going to be proof of stake. How much of Ethereum does do, Mt. Gox trustee have? Can we do proof of work versus proof of stake briefly? You can, I, but I just realize that it's like the weakest dick. No one actually cares about it. Shit, but go ahead. No one right, cares so about I, it. I really, we'll I really it. want your opinions on this. This is not this all is right. not me trying to score points. It's all good, man. It's so all good. So crush it, crush this for me. This Already. is the best argument. This is the best argument that I have heard personally for proof of work over proof of stake, right? Sure. It, it is. So it it's it's two parts, right? One, that proof of stake was considered by cypherpunks long before proof of work, and and they found that the penalty cost for cheating needs to be external to the system to ensure that the security model is maintained. So proof of work mining provides an anchor for the cryptographic asset in terms of real world expenditure, in this case being electricity. Yeah, but like, you, <laughs> I don't know. So I guess I'm like, it's going to sound weird, but it, it's something that I would say. Because I'm really smart, this shit's like so obvious to me. Like instantly, the second you say it, like I already know where the argument's going to end up, like already. Then I don't John understand why that I, I don't understand why like you don't come to the same like instant understanding. So like let me let me give you this example. So your your words that you just said were in order for the the consensus network to be secure, the cost has to be external. Okay. Yeah. Well, your external cost and proof of work network is buying hardware and buying electricity, right? Yes. Your external cost and proof so of stake network electricity, is buying electricity stake. Is the main one. Yeah, your your cost no. in a proof of stake network is buying the stake. No, no. The that, reason that's you don't native, that's native attack, to the network. That's not external. That's it native external. to the network. It is external. It's not. It's not. When I write somebody else a check for something, I assure you, it's very external. It's They're not equally external. The, I promise you. The asset is native to the network, so the, yeah, but, the cost. So. Let me, so let me, let me, let me take game, it one it, level it, further it for impacts, you. It impacts all the game theory of all the attack vectors. I know that. And let me go into the game theory. Sure. Why don't, why don't the miners 51% attack Bitcoin? Because you can only do it once. And if, and if you try and do it more than once, it'll do proof of work change. And, and, and how much are you going to get? And you're, and, and you're going to devalue the cost, the value of all your mining equipment. You use all this mining equipment you bought. You use it to attack the network. Your mining equipment isn't useful for anything else. Now your mining equipment isn't worth anything because you destroyed the trust in the network and all you did was profit off of one 
51% spend attack. And you fucked one exchange or maybe a couple exchanges out of some money. And that's it. That's all you got. And that same exact game theory, economic game theory, that protects Bitcoin for 51% tax, which is why no one even fucking tries them, is the same exact shit that protects proof of stake networks. Oh, you get some stake. Okay, cool. You have some stake. You borrowed it or you bought it or whatever the fuck. And now you roll back some transactions using your stake. Cool. You fucked over some exchanges. Congrats. And now your stake isn't worth anything anymore because you fucked the network. It's the same exact security model. And it's very fucking obvious. It's the same fucking security model. In one model, you give your money to the electricity company and the fucking hardware company, and you don't fuck the network because it devalues what you bought. And in the other model, you buy your stake from somebody else, and you don't fuck the network because it would devalue what you bought. It's the same exact okay. theory. Let me try from this angle then, right? Pierre Rochard states that proof of stake from a computer science perspective has unresolved issues. He claims that stakers do not need to commit to a specific history so they can it's commit to a thing infinite stake attack and you overcome yeah, yeah. it by or, proofs or, or of fraud. Range. Or a long range attack. Yes, and you overcome it with fraud proofs. And yes, I'm sure you can come up with some attack vectors versus proof of stake systems, but in general, people prefer just to get rich and be fine with it instead of work really hard to lose money and experiment trying to attack them. So, like, so if you Stanford, really wanted to make money attacking these fucking proof of whatever consensus networks, I bet you could find bugs in all of them. If you really wanted to go open up a short on a network and fucking attack it, I'll bet you could. But here's the worst part. You discover that half the time when you bring the network down, the price goes up, ha, 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 because life ain't fair. And you can't sell coins. You can't send to an exchange. So there's actually, like, more resistances built into these networks from fuckery which is why they're dog shit software, all of them. Even even Ethereum is better as it is than Bitcoin. The software still sucks, which is yeah, why yeah, we're look, fixing there's, it. There's certainly, there's certainly large risks to effing around and trying to attack these networks. However, we need to accept that not all attackers are financially motivated. You can have nation states that don't care about money. They're just, yeah, they're, they're, in that their argument, goal is just the to right way the to attack them is to send a drone strike to anyone operating a node. And if they proxy their nodes, use timing attacks to find out where the fucking, like, all these these like parade of imaginary horrible arguments are so stupid. But they can't like, kill no, everyone. No nation state is going to make SHA-256 miners when they can just write a law with a pen that says it's illegal. And watch the price drop 99.9. So like... So, <laughs> so Stanford, Stanford University, Stanford University did a study of proof of work versus proof of stake. Uh -huh. And... In their, in their findings, they believe that the only way that currently that you can have a proof of stake network that's legit is either to have checkpointing or what was the other thing? Um, yeah, but checkpoint's or, fine. Or, I don't mind it. Or, like, or, I don't have, it mind anchored, or have it anchored. Or have it anchored to a proof of work network, and so, but like one of so those is fine. centralization. Checkpointing it is cool. I'm cool with checkpointing. There we go. Thanks, Stanford. Because, well, because, obvi because obviously, anchoring to proof of work just admits that proof of work is the only secure consensus. But you just see, is here's what I don't get. Here's what I don't get. I I take your own argument and use it against you, and you pretend it's not happening. You said Stanford said checkpointing was okay, and then you manipulate the argument to pretend that they didn't say that, and to then say. Proof of works no, no, better because no. I think so. Look, Stanford said it. It's, it's centralized, though. It's centralization. I mean, checkpointing is centralization. You don't, you can't opt out of that. You're not compiling your own client that you wrote from scratch. You're sucking developer dick anyway, and it's unavoidable. You're going to suck dev dick when you compile your own wallet. You're not going to audit your own fucking wallet. You're going to suck dev dick when you type in your password and your fucking keyboard hoping you're not key logged. You're going to suck I, dev, like, you're sucking dev I think dick. That's it's not avoidable. I think that's a weak attitude, Richard. I think that's a very no, weak not. attitude because it's basically saying it's basically saying because somewhere else in the chain there's um, like people not behaving with the optimum security, we should just throw everything out the window and not no, care about security no, on any level. No, 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 no. It's saying that someone that already could fuck you and chose not to, the guy that wrote your wallet, could also give you a valid checkpoint. It's a very reasonable argument. The guy that you're already giving your fucking keys could also just give you an honest checkpoint. But wouldn't it's not it be a better everyone actually just, you didn't do that? The guy that wrote your actually... wallet could just have all your keys sent to him at will. Anytime he wants. So yeah, you're already sucking his dick. He can give you a good checkpoint. It's not a fucking hard argument at all.
a very reasonable mm -hmm. argument. As a matter of fact, that's probably superior to trusting the fucking miners, now that you bring it up, because I don't trust them motherfuckers a bit. Well, look, I think the aim here is to have something that is truly trustless, right? Ideally, no, ideally, not the aim. you want to be able the aim to operate to get within rich. the networks. The aim is to get rich, and your coin sucks for that. And the aim is to be secure, and your coin sucks for that. And the aim is not to blow up the goddamn earth, your coin sucks for that. Okay, I don't understand okay. what your coin ouch. isn't good in anything. Your ouch, coin's not ouch, good in anything. Perfect segue, Richard, because I was just about to bring up the energy fund. Good. Let's go. So so basically, obviously, obviously, this the what we just talked about with proof of work versus proof of stake does actually tie into the energy usage argument because of the fact that if you it's only if you believe that proof of work is unnecessary that you can be like, this is such a waste of energy. Otherwise, it's a good use of energy if you believe it's the only true way of yeah. reaching mm -hmm. a signal, yeah. right? So uh -huh. I believe that the Bitcoin energy fund is way overhyped, right? There is, so there is a massive trend. There's a massive trend in Bitcoin mining towards renewable energy and more importantly, <laughs> stranded energy. So, cool story, man. You, this in, is very similar in, to the when, IAB. Like, you, uh -huh. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yes, you, one you day maybe it. you'll be unstranding energy, but today you're fucking not. No, they're so already like, doing it. Let, yeah, like what? Two percent, one percent. Fuck but all. It's only percent. increased. Like, it's only it's like, increased. Though. Sure, yeah, but now that maybe the bear market kicked in, maybe you can't afford to unstrand shit anymore. It's it. But maybe it's the like, economics don't even work now. These early examples are like proof of concept that other people will be like, hell yes, we can. We don't have to flare gas. We don't have to, you know, we've got this waterfall over here. Like, stranded, I think the stranded energy argument is a strong one. And so in, in a recent interview that you had with that, um, that Bitcoin, I mean, like, there was okay. a Bitcoin guy, yeah, you did it on the Bitcoin <laughs> magazine channel. You remember the Bitcoin magazine channel, Richard? Yeah. yeah. On, on that interview, you said, if you love Bitcoin mining, you must really love nickel smelters, right? So yeah. the difference the difference is that you can't pick your nickel smelter up and move it to a new location. Whereas with a Bitcoin miner, you absolutely can. You can I mean, go and move it to I another know, country, man. another I energy think, source. I think stranded you can energy. move them. And I think nickel smelter. Oh, oh, sorry. I sh okay, okay. Accurate language. Because like, I mean, you can't, you can't example, move it. You like, can't move it without great expense, time, effort, etc. Right, you can, I, sure, I agree. It would cost you more, but why would you need to move? Like, well, why? Why would you move? There's no reason to, to move because of changes in the in like so to to chase stranded energy or to or no, but or like if the, like, if the political if the political environment if the political environment of where you set up that particular mining yeah. operation that, it on. changes. No, no, none of that shit applies to normal businesses, bro. I went to Iceland. Okay, flying helicopters, driving monster trucks, banging. Yep. Icelandic sounds, chicks. Sounds okay, cool. That sounds awesome. And and when I was there, I physically went to geothermal plants, and, yep. and there they were. They take water, they send it down to the fucking ground. There's heat there. It makes steam. It spins turbines. It takes like a few guys to run a like a plant will last like thirty fucking years, and it doesn't take many guys to run it at all. It's the most. It's the most energy efficient cost effective electricity like on the planet so i'm told it kind of makes sense you just you shit water and it makes steam and then you just shit the same water back and even need new fucking water wow crazy there's literally jacking the earth for energy yeah. so in that and so they have a shitload of, of aluminum smelting there or whatever they fucking call it aluminum refining now at what point is the motherfucking volcano gonna stop providing heat it ain't and so they don't need to fucking move. It's fine. It's all good. And this shit ain't going to change anytime soon. So like this idea that like you're going to check. Man, if you guys want to go move your fucking miners around to like stop things from being flared or whatever. Cool. But I'm actually not even sure the mechanics of how that makes shit better. Like. I, can you explain to me this? So So first of all. If proof of stake works, which I'm pretty sure it does, because we've had successful proof of stake networks for quite a few fucking years now, but you guys wish they didn't. You wish they all failed or some shit, but they didn't. They work. So, if it, with that in mind, if Bitcoin would just switch to proof of stake, the world would be a better fucking place, and the Bitcoin price would pump. 
But if we live in this world where you guys never want to fucking make that change and you just love giving electricity companies money, let's go into the direct dynamics of how the fuck capturing this energy actually reduces pollution. I want to understand this. So they have methane gas or whatever the fuck coming out of the earth and it's bad for the ozone. So they go, you know what? Let's catch it on fire instead. And then we catch it on fire. It's less bad for the ozone. And then they catch it on fire. And then the Bitcoin miner comes along and then somehow magically the pollution goes away somehow. Explain to me how the pollution goes away. Legitimate question because I don't understand where the pollution goes. I don't think you can, can you still hear me? So, sorry, yeah, this, is, sorry, this, this is going to sound like a cop out, but my phone was about to die of battery. So, so I had to good, find bro. a power plug. I can't um, repeat so this shit. No, 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 it's okay. You don't need to repeat it. Your, your question okay. was, um, how does it, how does it save? So, so basically, yeah. So they they have gas coming out of the ground. They light it on fire. Now, Mister Bitcoin Miner arrives and makes shit better. But how? How does shit get better for yeah, the Earth? Yeah. So, so you would you would basically you would rather than just burning the gas off while you're waiting for the next container shipment to, to container ship to arrive, right. you you use you use that gas locally at the location yep. to power Bitcoin miners. But do you know what "use that gas" means? It means burn it. So it was burning before, yeah. and now you're burning it instead. The gas is still getting burnt. I don't see how you're making yeah. anything any better. Well, because you're burning it with a purpose rather than just burning. So, okay, so again, the environment still so gets so fucked, admit, but come, you get to mine some coins back. and dump them on the market. So, so okay, yes, cool. So this, no, this does come back. This does come back to whether or not you believe in proof of work. It does. No, but like, bro, you're still fucking you believe, the environment in the ass, but then you're just like, yo, but I got paid to fuck it. Ha ha ha. But no, no, no. But it's going to get fucked anyway, right? Like, as in, if no. these guys are flaring gas, no. If these guys no. are flaring gas, then that's going to get well, burnt I anyway. Mean, okay, sure, you're fine. I mean, okay, yeah. But you're not like it's like dude, that industry. That industry is better. already that industry is already on a path. You're not going to stop. But you're like not going to setting a fucking them. gas source on fire is not really an industry, right? It's just on fire now. That's it. But, There's no maintenance. Just it's just always on fire. This is just one example, right? Like, the, you can get quite creative with where but you, you guys can are. Go like, already, to... you guys are already eighty percent renewable anyway, and I just don't care. You dump the price all the time with those with the coins that you get from your eighty percent renewals. You murder the price every ten minutes. It's bad for Bitcoin. Mining is bad for Bitcoin. Switch to proof of stake. Bitcoin price will pump. Environment will be happy. Win win for everybody. I don't know why you guys keep pretending that proof of stake doesn't work. It obviously does, and for lots of networks for a long time. I mean, shit, bro. Okay. Like, we have all kinds of failures in crypto, but they're not proof of stake network failures. We have no shortage of failures. I can think of more inflation bugs in Bitcoin than I can think of proof of stake network failures. And that's the other thing I don't understand. All of your arguments to software security revolve around shit where the security doesn't come from. Like you think security comes from hash rate and finality and chain weight, and it comes from none of those things. It comes from not having fucking inflation bugs. That's where the majority of errors in blockchain software occurred. Hey, Bitcoin, Bitcoin had them. Can, can Bitcoin had them. XLM had them. For a second. What? I want to play devil's advocate on what you said about the inflation bug. Would it Go. be interesting to say that the inflation bug for a proof of stake is? The fact that sovereign money printers can dilute GDP in order to get more stake to buy more stake. Isn't that the No, bug? because they could just buy more they could buy more mining hardware. It's the same same argument. You can print money to buy mining hardware. It's the same argument. They cancel out. Oh, you know, you're right. All right, cool. Yeah. Oh good. That's how I like the arguments they go. That's I like that. So tangent, Sorry. bro. I, I like you, man. I think you're a great hexagon. I love your pictures. I love your fucking DJ sets. I love all your shit. But like, Bitcoin sucks dick, man. Sorry. I know you Can have. Can we do? I've got. I've got one. Yeah. So do you, right? I mean, oh, sorry, sorry. You don't need to answer that. You Never talk about that. my finances. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. so, um, one one other thing. It's a minor point, but I just thought I'd bring it up, right? That. Sure. So, like recently. There have been like these humanitarian efforts around the world. You know, the truckers in Canada is an example of it that have shown this positive use case for Bitcoin, right? Where yeah, um, it where it, it the, the censorship resistance of its of its value transfer has come into play, 
and a, re- a requirement a requirement for that to happen is there needs to be the infrastructure for someone say in Canada or whatever the location is to be able to take that bitcoin that they've been donated yeah and um and and turn it into their local currency so they can buy mm-hmm. food or fuel yeah. or whatever the hell right so you need board. so so bitcoin so bitcoin has exchanges literally in every country around the world it's it's pervasive where if someone sends you Bitcoin, you can turn it into your local currency. Whereas many of these think, other coins. So first of all, if they could have done coin mixing, they wouldn't have got fucked. And and if they had used Ethereum, they could have used coin mixing. And I don't know of any exchange that carries Bitcoin but not Ethereum. So you're arguing for Ethereum, but you don't realize it. Ethereum would have done a better job serving those truckers than Bitcoin did. Cheaper, faster, more anonymous. <clears throat> it's an it's a wholesome, wonderful endeavor, and we have a better technology to support it. So I think that's possibly exhausted everything that I wanted to talk about on the Bitcoin side. I thought there were good I, th- I thought you I thought you put up a, a better effort than most. And you that, had one thing I agreed point. with that you on, my... which was the regulatory heat thing, which I liked. That was um, the claim of mine when when the Hex community was trying to convince me not to do this. I said, I guarantee you that I will be, it will be a At more least engaging good, yeah, and, more, and a better, a better Leave discussion to a than what you can to represent, represent Bitcoin better than a Bitcoin. And, 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 and I, that's what I said to them as well, that it's actually, it actually is a, something that the community can promote saying, Orca and I do a better job of defending Bitcoin than actual Bitcoiners. It's, it, it's, it's a feather in the hat of, of Hex. You, you didn't tell me that socialism and capitalism were the same thing. I thought that was the best argument of uh, of my last Bitcoin debate. <laughs> I thought that was a real fucking gem. Who's, like, wow. who's, um, who, who was on that side? Was that you or someone else? Oh, that was the... Uh, I think that socialism and capitalism are different by definition, tautologically. I think that's a, a no-brainer, that one. Um, I don't remember the guy's name. He's like a bald, bald dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. So, so Richard, is, is is everyone is everyone ready for me to bring the heat? Because because now go. I want to talk about Back. I want to talk about hell. Oh, I, 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 this is so this is this is the a this is the a game material. So like we've we've just been warming up so far, sort of. Thing, but this is hey, more you about. Better pick this up. Is, Tangent, it better pick me. up right now, dude. You better bring the heat right now. Do it. All right. This, 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 You've been late. So, so because obviously the debate was a, was going to be sort of hex. The, the ba- debate topic was going to be hex is better than Bitcoin. You on the affirmative, me on the negative, right? Well, I just, so I just I guess think Ethereum is, is better. It's, it's a consensus network, you know? No, no, no. Forget no. Ethereum. Like, it's, yeah. in, my, in my mind, in my mind, the only two things worth talking about are hex and Bitcoin. So, okay. Okay. but, but, but. Everyone, yeah. So, so we can we talk about the hex game theory? Yeah, right. So, yeah, good. When I look at the game theory across the hex network, it appears to me that the game theory for the entity or entities that have access to the origin address get different game theory from all other network participants. Yeah, probably. Well, I don't know actually. I mean, I mean that statement is basically the same as like a whale has different goals and time frames and shit and like yeah whales I'm, I'm, have I'm glad, different shit I'm, gl- sure. I'm glad you said that because because when you point to satoshi or other large scale holders in bitcoin or any other crypto mm-hmm. those large holders do not get separate ongoing network rule-based advantages specifically for them that are unfair to the other network participants whereas the oa does unfair Tell me more. Well, so perhaps the so word like, unfair is. <laughs> let, let's just say like, no, no, okay, no, no, no. I'll so, stick with it. I'll stand by it. I'll stand by that's it. That's fine. So, okay. So, so, so let's just say so. So let's just say the OA makes a stake, and then once it gets locked in, it ends its stake. Yeah. The the penalty that that address receives for yeah. ending the stake is yeah. lesser than any other network participant within yep. the hex network because because some of it gets that's right sent back to the oa assuming right? assuming that the oa was controlled by the same entity that also controlled the the address that's ending assuming the, the oa daughters that were doing the staking and unstaking were controlled by the same address that actually had oa keys 
You could say that, sure. Yes. Now, that's a cool parade of imaginary horribles. Now, let's look at the reality. In the chain analysis that I've seen, OA daughters hold 20% of shares. And so in the real world, counter to your fucking gay argument, if someone were to try and end, make a stake and end a stake, make a stake and end a stake and shit, all they would do would be enrich all the other non-OA daughter addresses that hold the majority of the stakes, that hold the majority of shares. So it doesn't work. Okay, okay, okay I've got this. It just so doesn't work. Is it, is it possible that certain aspects of Hex's tokenomics, including what you just said, could be good for medium-term price appreciation while also being bad for broad, long-term adoption? It, it depends on what, what type of person is looking at the market. If the yes, class of yeah, person is a person that only likes coins that he thinks is decentralized, then the ownership of Hex isn't as decentralized as other coins. But he's also stupid because shit that's centralized economically does very well. Amazon, Facebook, economically centralized. Just fucking okay. best time to buy Bitcoin was when Satoshi owned 100% of the coins. But for those people that aren't smart enough to know those things, they might not like that. What I know is that every time I see the OA get a coin, it never gets sold on market. But everyone, every time a pleb faggot gets a coin, it's a reason. Them shits be finding their way to market and hurting the price. Isn't that crazy? I agree with so you. So it turns out that the person that like doesn't need to fucking sell oftentimes won't, but the pleb that needs to sell oftentimes will. So like personally, you know, I, I like to see the OA get lots of fucking coins because it seems like if it keeps doing what it's been doing, that's good for price. R Richard, on that point, I agree with you. Like you're n not the overall debate of that point. I mean, here, here, let me, let me, let me help you your, your point, right? Let me help you with a point. Your, your Any large whale in the community could send the price to negative levels that no one would like. So you could probably send the fucking hex price down some percent, personally. A lot of people in the chat could send some hex price down a bunch of percent, personally. But then the question is, after that was done happening, and that fucker got shaken out, then where does the price go? Because the system keeps working awesome. So like if the OA decided to fucking, or if the OA daughters decided to murder themselves and murder the price one day, as Bitcoin has been murdered multiple times before, what would happen just after? Well, I, you know, no crystal ball, but I wouldn't be surprised if the price went right back up. Yes, yes. So, so, so like, I, I, I know that many in the Hex community, including <laughs> myself, are like incredibly grateful. Like I cannot stress that highly enough. Incredibly grateful that that OA address and, and daughter addresses have never hurt the price, dumped on followers, etc. Like dumped on, dumped on community, etc. However, I know, I know you, a lot of founders. Now look, there's nothing to say that the founder has OA keys or whatever, but if we're saying that like, if we're comparing OA to say Vitalik, Vitalik dumps yeah. Ethereum all the time. Yes. OA doesn't. Well, that seems yeah, the, cool. Every project, every project, the founders dump, dump coins, for sure, for sure. There you go. However, however, you, you've been quoted as saying that crypto was invented to get rid of middlemen. Yeah, and, sure. And having a massive holder, call it a benevolent whale, does it reintroduce... Just falls down to another, it falls down to another whale. So let's say you get rid of the OA. Okay, now you got the god whale. Oh, let's say you're a fucking socialist. You get rid of the god whale. Okay, you got... Guys that got an ordinary, okay, we get rid of those. Oh, we got referral link guys. Like at some point, you cannot the the socialist faggotry of pretending that the world is a better place if everyone has exactly as much money as you, it never actually comes to fruition. There's always a power law distribution. Always. There's always somebody that has ten times more than you. Always. And that guy can always murder the price in comparison to you. Always. It yeah, that's fair. Bitcoin. It happens in everything. It's not. It's not. Got, it's not. Get rid of a, a bull. You would just change who 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 it was. But and and so part of what I'm about to say actually stems all the way back to the whole like Satoshi argument. But it's directly. It's more direct about this. When when institutions, nation states, high net wealth individuals look at what crypto they are going to invest. Negative seventy three percent. But no, no, but. Do you, do you do you see it as being a problem where if there's the coins one down seventy three percent, they don't there's, care. There's, they market buy person, on Coinbase out of their phone. So just just from, buy. just from their own buy hacks. like 
They'll buy hacks for noobs. They're dumb. They market buy from their phone. They're not sitting there like you trying to socialize the fucking no, the market. I'm not, no, I'm not trying people. to be a socialist. I'm not trying to be a socialist. I'm just trying to get inside the heads of of large scale. So you economic. don't think you don't think the president of Israel would see me twerking and decide to FOMO from his phone? You're not um, there yet, bro. It's gonna take a little while before we're there. You guys are gonna but, have to do a better job marketing so that my twerking is irrelevant. <laughs> But, but my, my concern I mean, you know, let me summarize his argument. He's saying hex sucks because Bitcoin's no, been around longer, so people don't realize it's just an old shit coin. But, but it's been, been around so long that they forgot that it's just another shit coin. I don't think that's hex what's sucks. so funny to me about Bitcoin. Like, I know, but like, I'm just saying when Bitcoin's around as long as Bit when hex is around for as long as Bitcoin has had, it will have a better well, actually, it's always going to be 10 years ahead. So we'll see. I mean, like, I just. Why do I give a fuck what these faggots think? My shit went up 10,000x and Bitcoin limp dick to 3x. Why do I give a fuck about any of your arguments? The reality of my coin already outperformed the reality of their coin. All of your parade of imaginary horrible bullshit aside. Like, it, it's irrelevant. Everything. Like, the price chart tells you the fucking truth. That's the truth. The truth is, if you bought X on January 5th of 2020, you are up 200 and fucking... 15x or more versus bitcoin right now after a 90 percent dip that's the fucking fact that's the reality and all this maybe if someone did this and maybe if a government did that and and all this fucking fake bullshit like it's just it's like no one cares man they don't no one gives a fuck people um, are in so this to get rich and they don't want to get their shit hacked and bitcoin's been hacked fucking twice and hex has never been hacked and I wouldn't be surprised to see Bitcoin get hacked a third time and for hacks to never get hacked. <coughs> I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of this well into the future in terms of, say, like global, like world yeah, reserve. So, okay, ready? Currency. Ready? Everyone in the world adopts Bitcoin as a global reserve company and it does a fucking 10x. And no one gives a fuck about your shit 10x that you had to wait 100 years for. No, no one cares. No, no, but Richard, I said earlier in this discussion that no, like, as in, I'm not, I'm not debating price. I'm not debating where the gains are. I know that. I tell people all the time, if you want I, that I game, hope you become the global it's, it's reserve currency, and, the and, and then we can watch the uh, the fucking all the fossil fuels of the world evaporate. Because the security model of Bitcoin is literally that you have to burn enough money in order to protect an amount of money. And as the amount of money that you're protecting goes up, the amount of money you have to burn goes up at a fucking one to one or worse ratio. And so, like, if you really want to see Bitcoin as a global reserve currency of the world, you really will destroy the planet, truthfully. Like, I'm no kidding. Like, I'm, I'm fucking serious. Rich, Richard, have you heard this theory about how the, the, your race, like in terms of here, it's like the human race, you know, actually, you actually want higher energy usage to actually expand as a species, as a species. It's like yes, your energy usage, you want usage. that to go up. Yes, this is Elon Musk's argument, and it assumes that the usage is intelligent. Not yeah, literally but, wasteful on purpose. The exact absolute opposite of utility. Well, then that it's just comes back to the proof, proof of, of waste. Proof of, proof of work thing. But, it's, but it comes back to whether you believe proof of work is required for a, for a sound monetary instrument. Because but we if know it is, it's not. But we know well, it's we not. Don't know for sure. proof, proof of stake hasn't been proven yet. How many more years in do you my, want to wait? In my opinion. Yeah, how many more years do you want to wait? Um, you want to wait until Ethereum, I, like, I don't, 10 I don't think it's a time. Like, I don't think it's a time thing. I think I think. Well, it's then you're more... dumb. I mean, like, what what's your fucking rule then? Wait for another Stanford paper to say it's okay. <laughs> but they just did that already. I don't do appeal to authority. You said it was okay with checkpointing. <laughs> you said it was no, okay with checkpointing, and so just have checkpointing and fucking stop blowing up the environment and burning I up said, the price. I said. I said they said it only works with either of those two things, and none of neither of those are acceptable to me. Bro, checkpointing should check, be acceptable. Do you trust the guy that compiled not, your fucking client? You can trust him to give you a good checkpoint. You're trusting him not to export your fucking keys. When you when your fucking node communicates with the network to sign a transaction, he could just tell it to dump all your keys to him. So unless you're personally compiling and expecting every fucking line of code of the wallet you're using, you're already trusting that guy totally and completely with your keys. Unless you're using 2FA or some shit. And then he could just have you sign a weird transaction that got around that anyway. So, like, it's just, it, if you can trust the person that wrote your wallet, which you have to, then you can trust the fucking checkpoint. So, hey, so can Richard, we, can, tangent, can, wait, wait, wait. Tangent. Hey, Tangent, 
tangent. Can yep. we bring up? Um, it looks like Nurse Scarlet has had her hand up for a while. Uh, can we? Uh, I'm, can we have I'm so in? close to the end, man. I'm so I'm so close to the finish end. Finish it. Key, finish it. Yeah, we're letting Tangent right, finish, finish it. Gold. Gold. We're, we're, we're so close. Yeah, we're coming to you soon, Gold. We're coming Everyone to you. Soon. Shut the fuck up. Everyone, shut up. I would rather watch Tangent's body become disintegrated, have his spirit come back as a ghost, and then have to fight this fight all over again from the ethereal huh. realm than listen to anything else right now. Now you may continue. Thanks, guys. So, so Richard, do you, do you at least agree that adoption is important? Richard? His mic's muted. Sorry, Richard. Oh, um, someone mic. muted everyone, Richard. You need to unmute your mic. So... So my question is: Is adoption imp important? And do and so do you see that these two things that I've raised, i.e., people being able to point, like when people are investing into an asset where they know that is going to heavily enrich someone that they can point to and be like, so so for example, say a Michael Saylor. So the Winkle like, Vitamins. The Michael so, Saylor, okay. So everyone yeah, wants but, to but, buy but, make it, Michael Saylor rich, so they prefer but, to buy Bitcoin. But remember, but remember when I said, but remember when I said that in Bitcoin you had like a list and it wasn't even complete. Whereas within Hex, I'm not saying it is because we don't know who owns the keys. But people, there will be people out there who will assume that it's you and only you, and they're like, "Do I really want to spend hundreds of millions of dollars of my money making this other guy like the richest person in the world, or would I rather just?" jump onto some other like make that's my own a, project that's an or invest extremely in extremely easy to answer question smack smoke it let's we have seen people answer exactly that in every successful startup every successful startup is one rich ass motherfucker handing a smaller group of people a shitload of money so when uh draper handed over his what like, fucking 12 million or whatever to buy the 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 coins that were seized from uh, the uncensorable, unseizable coins that, haha, ha, lol, were seized from the Silk Road dude. Yep. You know, he was happy to hand the money over to the federal government, of all people. And when, uh, you know, somebody came and gave money, when Sean Parker came and gave money to fucking Zuckerberg, he's happy to do it. And then the A round was happy, and the B round was happy, and the C round was happy, and the D round was happy. Yes, we have thousands of instances of proof of motherfuckers with hundreds of millions of dollars happy to give them to a dude for some shit because he wants to make more. That's startups okay. all over the place. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. No. Richard, you've, you've convinced me on this. All right. That, that, right. that, 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 that's, that that's doable. So the, yeah. so the last thing, I just want to talk briefly about Pulse. Right? And by the way, so just, I mean, by the way, totally unrelated. Totally unrelated. Yep. But there was some sacrifices for freedom of speech and for freedom of movement, which generated what looked like at least six hundred and sixty million dollars of stablecoin energy. Because yep. I remember seeing totals of about like six sixty M of just stables sitting in those addresses. That kind of also like I mean, they are supporting freedom of speech and freedom of movement, but I promoted those things. And I said they were good things to promote. And I'm the one that said it. And so, like, maybe people don't think I suck. Maybe people think I'm cool. Of all the things that we've discussed, this is the thing that you've got me most convinced on. That that is that is a solid as fuck argument as to why Retired. that that won't why that won't be a problem. So, I just, I just want to ask you a quick question about Pulse, yeah. or like a, it's yeah. a quick, quick yeah. attack attack yeah. on Pulse attack. So, well, it's a sort of attack. Let's. I mean, look, 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 look why does it? Sure. Why doesn't uh, why doesn't consensus just fuck Ethereum in the F? I mean, they own like MetaMask, they own uh, fucking Infura. Like, why don't they just fuck Ethereum in its ass? Oh, because they make more money not blowing up their own bags. Oh, and then anything you're going to say has the same argument. But they also haven't had a gun put to their head by a nation state saying you blow it up or else. Well, I'm waiting till some Bitcoin mining pools get guns put to their head. That'll be funny. Or that mining council that Sailor hooked up. That seems like a nice I was against that. I, I was I was I was dead against the idea of them all being like <laughs> registered and listed and stuff. That, that's that was dumb. But but we'll we'll see how that plays. I mean, out. look, if here's the thing, right? I invented the term just in time security. And yep. what it means is that if if the reality starts to get shitty and people are playing meaner, 
and doing more attacks or more fucking fucked up attacks, then you just counter, right? You're like, oh, they're kicking doors in. Okay, well, now there's more doors. Richard, you're you actually know. starting to answer. You're starting to answer the question I was about to ask. So I'll quickly, right. I'll quickly shoot it in there, right? So, right. on chain indicates that the OA owns a shitload of pulse, like uh, as in sacrificed OA daughters, but sure, um, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, OA, OA daughters. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, right. So, with that percentage of pulse, I mean, theoretically, okay. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, it would allow those addresses to take control of the network effectively delegate to choose who is who the validators yep. are by yep. delegating to, to whoever not yep. just not just not just the majority but literally all 33 right I, i've done the math roughly Probably, and yeah. mm -hmm. right so yep. so in my opinion you know actually the question i should have asked first is you agree that Admin keys are a bad idea, right? Like all of Hex community, you agree, we all preach that admin keys are a no-go for genuine crypto projects. Mm -hmm. However, I see this as being like pseudo-admin keys because if, if an admin key allows you to basically like, just take control over everything and do what you want, taking control over all of the nodes also allows you to do whatever you want. If you yeah. don't like admin keys, you're not going to like the bridge either, baby. Because that's uh, the only way that we could figure out to do it. Yeah, I, and no I'm, I'm one aware else of that. has figured I'm, out another I'm, way either. I'm, I'm aware so of like, that, but but the bridge is the bridge is not the entire network, right? Like, mm, true. Yeah, that's true. Look, dude, if you think that uh, people that have a large amount of stake in a thing are going to ass fuck their bags by fucking the network, then you don't believe in blockchains because all blockchains are secured by financial self interest. If miners didn't care about making money, they just would mine empty blocks constantly and fuck you in your ass and be like, ha your network doesn't work anymore. We just mine empty blocks only. Ha ha. But they don't do that because they care about financial incentives. And so the same financial incentives that make all blockchains work. And by the way, I already answered your question before you asked it and told you that the same reason consensus doesn't blow their fucking brains out and just turn off MetaMask and turn off fucking Infura is because they like making money. Is the same so reason that somebody that might hold a shitload of stake in a consensus network might not break the fucking network. Like but wouldn't it be a better? Question. Wouldn't it be better to have something where you don't have to rely on that secondary game theory? No, no. Where, you know where why? it's actually trustless. I don't, you want to know why? Because this fake trustless shit usually ends up with a bunch of backdoor buddy buddy scumbags fucking everybody over, and it's just fake. So like. Like uh, Uniswap. Uniswap has a DAO. Okay, cool. The DAO voted to give like $25 million to some fucking entity no one had ever heard of before to do like blockchain education. And they like gave them the $25 million and then no one ever heard of them again. Yeah. Well, isn't that funny? Oh, well, that was decentralized, right? That was, that was the shit that you're lobbying for. And it just fucked everyone in their ass and it didn't work. Because like, you know, every attempt at this like Dow shit. I've looked at it and it looks like it sucks balls. They, they don't make the right decisions. You know, there's a saying that the best way to run a new startup is with a benevolent dictator. Let me Google that actually. Let's find out what that says. I was literally just about to drop that term, Richard, because no. so so my so my main point. So my main point overarching all of this. I mean, so, so your shit is like, yo, dog, fucking, I prefer other dudes other than OA, even though the OA daughters are like in the grand scheme of all fucking crypto history, the only people to ever act as good as OA daughters is fucking Satoshi himself. But fuck those motherfuckers. I'd much rather have, the, rather have these other random ass motherfuckers that's probably going to act like the validator, like... It, I personally no 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 no, no. Like, I trust them I trust them and that would be my preference and I'm, you, and I'm you trying can't, to look at this no other there's just no other way to fucking you have to trust somebody and this you can only reduce the trustfulness so far until you hit a bottom where you have to have trust you have to trust your keyboard you have to trust there's no video camera watching it you have to trust there's no audio watching it you have to trust no one evil maid attacked you you have to trust the fucking shit that compiled you have to like there is trust that you cannot reduce. And, so you, and, so you do agree with me that a benevolent dictator counts as a trusted party. 
Well, here's the thing, man. It's like there's just a lot of assumption in this statement that I can't address. Like how many people is the OA daughters? You don't know? So like there's a lot of assumptions going into this that are like <laughs> you, you don't know how many people are on those OA daughters. I was going to jokingly say just one, Richard. Just well, one. <laughs> I'm joking. I am fucking joking. I hear you. Yeah. So like, I mean, it's just here, here's another thing. Like when you experiment with like when you fuck around and start trying to change known good working parameters, maybe it works worse and not better. I mean, it's common, actually. Like, if something works really great and you start fucking with it, it usually works less great. That's why you can't... Like, if you get a new BMW that's not a turbo, like, like if you get an E46 M3 that runs high compression, you can't barely do How, anything to it. Do you, do you know I own that car? What car? I didn't know that. Did you, like, the car one. that you just said... The car that you I just said... I used to have one. I just used to have one. It's a good car. I like it. The SMG shift. I love it. Shift. I love it. I'm never going to sell it. I love it. Love the way it shifts. It's a great car. Richard, I, um, feel like that's, I feel like that's a good segue. Um, sure. I, I have can, a, can I just, can I I just conclude? Want, I didn't want to come up, but I do have a question conclude, that conclude. Uh, wanted me to come up. Uh, basically, they're they're asking you to FUD Maxi. Um, <laughs> they're, yeah, they, I, I feel like you're aware of it at this point, but like... Isn't, yeah, isn't like, Maxi somebody I mean, like premium, made a giant ass steak and then sold shares in it? I mean, that seems legit to me. I don't yeah. understand. Like you're just I know. you're taking but, but the, you're taking premium, smart contract counterparty right risk, and that like you hope it doesn't get hacked. But if it doesn't get hacked, it seems legit. Yeah, I know, man. The, so, the premium is just too high right now, Richard. They want the premium. Well, I don't fucking now. know. I don't look We're at the chart. For some some fud right now, we need. Oh uh, uh, well, some speculation. No, congrats, bro. Like, right. it, listen, man. If you're gonna make coins on top of hacks that pump hacks and then do well themselves, congrats, bro. Good, good on you. Guys, guys, just really quickly before we shift away, I just want to thank yeah, yeah. everyone in here for being so fucking patient to allow well, me to do you, this. Man. It was so extended. I also want to thank Richard for allowing me to do this. And I and I appreciate it, it, you doing a good job. You know, you did a good job trying to represent the maxi arguments. I feel like you don't you realize for, that you, you lost, but you might one day. <laughs> look, look the, the, the thing is, I start, like, before we did this discussion, I believed that you were not being like that you were being intellectually dishonest either deliberately or accidentally about bitcoin Never. and you Never. and you have managed to convince me in this discussion that you actually do believe so i don't necessarily agree with you on everything you've said but, you know but i interested. believe that you believe it yes and, i truly do and Look, so i, I think, actually I don't i probably a, lose more money shit talking bitcoin than i make like talking the truth about it probably costs me money but it's the truth and literally all I ever ask of anyone is to tell the truth. So, yes, so Richard, th thanks for everything. Thanks, Thank thanks you, for man. letting me do this. And um, hopefully we can chat again soon right. another time. Sounds great, bro. Keep them hot pictures coming. I love them, bro. I love to see <laughs> Hexton go hot folk. For real. Thanks, I really man. Do. Thanks, Richard. See you, man. See you, man. So, guys, um, yeah. A couple more? A, a hack, the Bitcoin community needed a Hexkin to do a better job standing up for Bitcoin. So, go Hex, go Hexkins. And look, Bitcoin's still probably better than the stock market. So, I mean, I have to check the chart. I hope it's still better than the stock market. I'm going to have to stop saying that. Lol. I hope it, I hope it can continue to be better than the stock market, I hope. Hey, uh, Tanner, who's next? I'm going to, I'm going to gently uh, lower Tangent's body down into a grave, and then we'll have <laughs> these other speakers go. <laughs> hey, he died with honor, bro. He, he died with well, fucking honor. Well, he really, really did. That was fucking spectacular. Nurse, it's all yours. All right. Well, Black Hexican, she had her hand up first. She had it up a while. So, um, does she still want to go? Uh, yeah. Hard to follow after that. I just started. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, it's a hard one. Actually, it's too technical. Most people don't give a shit about none of that. Yeah, I'm really consensus bullshit. For the KSB team, you know, your U.S. road trip team that goes around talking about how wonderful you are in all your projects. Well, um, damn, wanted... uh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're the ones that wrap the cars and, you know, do all that stuff. Love it. Love uh, it. So we're planning a new tour for next year for Post Chain. Yeah. And we're the ones that are hosting the golf tournament on Labor Day. Uh, right. I just wanted to let you know that there are about 20, 30 ladies involved in 
uh, that effort of wow. pictures that say, you know, come hang out at our hole. Nice. Um, let us wash your balls. Uh, oh my I god! That can, <laughs> I know that you can. Read you guys again with the outrage marketing shit. All yeah, right. that's where we learn from. It's all about that outrage. All marketing. right, I hope it works. It's. I think it's harder for girls. I don't know. I don't know if the outrage works the same for girls. I hope it does, but it might. Sex I, like, that's true. So, that is true. I hope um, it works better. I know you can retweet our last uh, situation. Well, yeah, hit we me. What? What? Cha- what? Hey, what? Uh, give me the link. Give me the link. Uh, it's actually right here in the nest. Jack uh, Hexican posted it. She's the one that makes all the cool memes. Um, it's like the third post in the nest. It says "Just for Richard." golf meme come hang out with us at the at the hole so hold on let me look i'm on her page golf memes i mean i don't see no donation links on her shit let me well, look no, up we, just, we, we did one without the donation links just okay. so that you could retweet it we didn't want so the one the last one is like an hour old with the nice booty yes <laughs> okay yes I'll please retweet that thank you richard all right hey, that's my all pleasure. i got hey thank you Keep up the good work. I appreciate it. Thank we all you. do. Much love. All right, nurse. I see y'all. I see y'all trying to break my my sleep schedule up. All right, keep them coming. Let's go. <laughs> go on, nurse. Okay, so um, what's up with the TikTok, Richard? I gotta make one. I literally just haven't done it. Can you do it? Today? I gotta work on it. Can you do it today. I'm too tired now. I could do it tomorrow, probably. Yeah, that'd be great. Because, you know, like, I mean, TikTok. It's stupid not to have one. It's real stupid. It is. And then we can't tag you. And there's some people out there. I need it. I need it. And then it's. Hey, y'all on this call, remind me to make one until I actually do, please. (laughs) I need TikTok. It's real stupid to make all this content and not just copy paste it. Exactly. So that's what I was going to say. Like, you can just. Download 100%. your download your 100%. reel, post it. So all right, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Richard, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Go. So I'm going to get back to a little economics. So one of the things I think you agree that we all agree is we got a fiat currency issue around the world, right? Fiat's going to zero eventually. It's mm-hmm. been developed over mm-hmm. the last who knows how many decades. We all know yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. That it's in the short term. Dollars running, whatever. In the in the in the in the context of a stable coin, they're all still backed by a by the a currency, either the dollar or the pound, whatever, right? Yeah. Tether yeah. a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. Still puts you kind of in that same position. How what are your thoughts and feelings on a stable coin backed by gold that's an algorithm that buy that re adds and removes gold based on the volume and it's got a reserve to it? Like with two or three to one, whatever it is. I think so they already like, have that. I think it's already a thing. A, I know that's already it. a thing, actually. Love to love Yeah, there's to, already gold backed coins, dude. But they're not stable, no, they're but, just gold backed. But I'm talking about a stable coin. It's very specifically a stable coin because gold is cash. Gold is not meant to be an investment. We all know that. And no, but like you can't so here's what happens, right? You, you wanna I know there's Paxos. Like I know that there's gold backed coins, but they follow gold. I'm talking about keeping it at par. So instead of selling and going liquid into a USDC or USDT or whatever, a fiat-backed stablecoin, you got an algo gold-backed stablecoin. Yeah, but what, what I'm saying is, like, someone gives you 100 bucks. He's like, yo, give me a stablecoin. And you're like, okay, here's a coin, and I got your 100 bucks. And then he's like, oh, but wait a second. I want this shit to be more complicated. Instead... I still want my hundred bucks, but then you, instead of just holding the hundred bucks, you got to hold some other shit. So, hmm, let me roll well, some dice. The same thing with dollars okay, now, I choose the gold. Petrodollar. The petrodollar. I choose gold. And then you choose gold. And then the guy's like, hey, man, you, you wanted to get weird with this shit and make me hold this fucking gold, but bro, the gold just went down. And you said you wanted this to be, quote, stable. And so now you're flexually reserved. And so it just doesn't make no fucking sense, bro. Well, if you have enough bad. of a res- if you have enough of a reserve that adds and re- and removes, then the you're gold. capital inefficient because you require people to over collateralize to make up for the dips. So it's just a dumb idea. I mean, 
I know you like gold. Just buy a gold coin, man. Because, like, you can't, well, if you want, like, it's, I don't understand what you're trying to achieve. Like, you're trying to make the stable coins have a better backing or what? I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to have it not. They probably already hold not. gold, man. They probably, like, these stables, like, USDC has a basket of investments. They have commercial paper. They've got fucking all types of investments already. Gold is just a poorly performing investment. I'd probably rather stick with whatever shit they already have. Well, I don't think it's an investment at all. All right, then I'd rather have what they're already doing, which is like actually trying to get yield. And if they're successful, your shit's more secure, not less. I mean, it's untold. Like, I prefer they take less risk or just hold the fucking cash. But like, I mean, like, ideally, they just hold the fucking cash because then like, because if they lose, they're going to socialize the losses. You're going to get jacked. If they win, you're not getting nothing. So it's a free call option for them. So like, I think the ideal stable is one that just holds the fucking money. I think Paxos does, but like, don't quote me. Because, it, like, I mean, it was a good thing to bring up because, like, understanding well, how stables work. Yeah, I mean, I'm, cool. I just, I, I've just been thinking about it for a while. You're just forcing the stable into a weird investment when they already are doing other non-weird investments, and it's, it's okay. Well, like you said earlier, people. And so it's not like if, if we find out that right? it's not okay, then that will suck, you know? Like, well, people like if USDC actually had like Luna on their shit and they didn't tell anyone, then it'd be like. Rex. Well, then you're in trouble. Like Paxos is all LBMA Hallmark Gold. If we got LBMA Hallmark Gold at a discount, no, but I think I think Paxos also mind. has a product which just literally holds dollars and shows full reserve. So at least they I've heard also. that. That's a different. No. that's a different, a completely different one. Yeah, they have no. their own stable coin. I just, yeah. I'm just looking for a way to get away from fiat, right? So when we sell and take profits, we're not. Well, look, in man, fiat. look. There's only one way out of fiat, and it's to have the non-stable actual stuff. Right. So in order to get away from fiat, you got to drop the the stable, which really just means tied to fiat. It's not actually stable at all. It goes down in value. It goes down in value almost all the time because dollars go down in value almost all the time. And so stable really means just goes down in value which, almost all the time. So which just, is what I'm trying to get away from. Well, yeah. So you just have to own shit that's not stable, like actual assets, you know? Right. Got but look, bro, like I think having stable and buying dip is probably, uh, you know, a successful strategy for a lot of folks because <laughs> you know some some shit's more tax uh, preferential than other shit you know for sure for sure all right thank you very all much right. man my pleasure Doing man. war room stuff with, with you is a freaking it's a fucking dream thank uh, you man. funding jim hey i just wanted to chime right. in on that uh, small bit that small bit was true usd is an escrow it's not it's a dollar that's locked just like a bridge of fiat into an ERC-20. It's called TUSD. So if you're talking about stablecoin, uh, that one was founded by Stanford. Uh, it has, you know, a lot of backing. It's fully audited as far as what's in its bank accounts uh, versus other things that might be, you know, partially crypto-backed or gold-backed or, you know, speculative instruments. So I just wanted to comment about TUSD. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cool. <clears throat> Mr. Hart, I'm happy so. to have you. freaking... Uh... I think you're a genius. Thank you, man. Uh, you know, your energy and whatnot, everything's dope. And appreciate also, it, brother. As a crypto, as a crypto head and whatnot, definitely appreciate your uh, your calls on the bottom. You know where we're headed in this bear market regarding Bitcoin. Yeah, I called it. I called it right. <laughs> Motherfuckers didn't listen. I'm like, all right, well. Later, a lot of people don't get it. They don't get the game, yeah. You know, I'll see you at the bottom, bitches. <laughs> so, like, you know, just as a hexagon, I appreciate if you. You know some some of that Twitter activity. I'm definitely watching and um, taking note of all, all, all your wisdom and all that. So thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Who next? All right, y'all. If you don't have anything to say, I got to rotate you off the stage. I got a shitload of people trying to uh, request the mic, and also you should probably retweet the room so that other people can get in here with limited access that we got. Richard, I have a question. I, I do have a question. Yep. Um, so, as, as far as Pulse Chain launching, um, how how you know there's a lot of people that aren't hexkins that are coming into the community. How how can they best support the success of Pulse Chain? Well, I mean, uh, participate heavily in the network once it exists. Promote it before it exists. Practice on the test net. Put stickers out, you know, put 
fucking cards out. Do direct mail, you know, do the work, man. Same shit we've been doing. So same, more the same. That's about it. I mean, if you wanted to, you could get other projects to try to integrate, but like, I don't give a like half of these fucking teams is probably going to disappear in a bear anyway. So like, you know, I don't even bother with that shit. They'll, they'll come when they fucking see how good it is. That's my feels Richard, on the like Richard, other projects bullshit. Richard, how do you feel about the network effect Metcalf's law playing into the Pulse Chain network being that we have so many projects that are coming online from day one, which has ne never been happening before? Yeah, maybe. It could be. Look, man, I, I think Pulse Chain is a goddamn fabulous idea. Fabulous. I mean, the bear market hasn't even solved the gas fees. Shit still costs too much. Well, sweet. I, I thought that, you know, fees would come down a bit. They didn't even come down. It's like, I mean, it came down a bit. Let me look at the shit. Yes. Richard, I yeah, have a question. A what, what, what's, Richard, what would, um, what would be your advice for people? Here's the thing. I, I, the, the beautiful thing about Pulse Chain, man, like, especially from the high skin community, like, it, it has driven a lot of people that um, I feel like had, you know, entrepreneurship in their heart. And they're like, finally, they, like, they see Pulse Chain as opportunity. Um, on ramp users outside of my fucking communities. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Stop well, sucking I mean, pump hard, out of right? my like, shit. <laughs> Go well, fucking that, maybe, get other maybe users. That's, maybe that's a better question. Um, then what I was going to, my, my question was going to be like, what would, what would your advice be to them? But, um, so like, users you're, you're from other think, communities, how, man. How do we, like, what's a good strategy for, uh, you know, connecting pulse chain, new projects outside of the Hexkins community? Well, here's my thing, bro. It's like, you hear Vitalik chilling ERC twenties. Nah, why? Cause he ain't, he ain't got bags at ERC twenties. So like, I want to see my coins that I designed do well. And so if some motherfucker comes up and is like, yo, Rich, I could buy shit you invented. But instead, I want you to tell me why I should buy some shit you didn't invent. No. You know what I mean? But, but Richard, let's be honest. Like, for, for Pulse Chain to, like, for Pulse Chain Read to my book. To I'll teach you how to do good marketing. No, no, no. What, no, but what, like, I'm saying, what I'm saying is, though, for, for the, for Pulse Chain, for Pulse X and Hex, for those to do a 2000 X, like you do need a network. You need to like need to you support. Don't. You yeah, actually you, don't I mean, you though. Can't. You really think, no, you don't you, though. You really think Pulse, Pulse X and Hex by themselves would run a full network? Hey, you ready? You ready, dog? Watch me prove this shit. I'm so good at this. I love this shit. Hey, do you remember Ethereum in 2017 when it went up 14,000 X? What were them cool ass projects running on that shit? Oh, it was like jack shit. You know what I mean? So like, yes, like Pulse can serve as a great home for a lot of projects. But in reality, those projects do not need to actually be there at all for Pulse to do amazingly well. Like, like Ethereum did well. Like, it's just, are people okay, buying okay, it? Here, here are they my, using here it? My, like if Hex was the only thing on Pulse, Pulse could still do well. Here's my challenge. If, if the other shit wants to be on Pulse, great. Like I support it, but I ain't never gonna promote some other motherfuckers and point over my coin. Richard, like, trust like, me, Richard. Richard, you yeah. know I I'm building, and yeah. I I would never expect. So I, so I my answer is that. my answer is if you want to on ramp other communities and be like, look, you tired of losing money to fucking fees? Well, your code's already here and it's free, and you don't got to do shit. Richard, I know, like. You know me, like I, I've, I've told my community not to like be in your threads, uh, like shilling my shit. Thank you. I 100, percent dude. I, I respect because I do the same, I do the same shit to new projects in our threads. I, I block yep. them instantly because, um, you're not like otherwise I, you're I've just earned, sucking the puff out of your shit for a while. 100%, like, you know? hundred percent. Yep. And I, you know, I, I don't, I don't like, you know, I'm not showing your threads, and I respect that, and I do the same. Um, but I, I will say this. I, I am so inspired by Pulse Chain and what you're building. Um, Thank and, you, man. And truly, um, and, and 
like here's the cool part it about will it, be like, better than I know, Ethereum, you, I know so you, i know you're focused on actually building the chain and yeah. i i i'm a part of this like radical um group of like really inspired people that are inspired by you and they're they're bringing to pulse and and the thing i want to share with you is like the standards that you've set as far as trustless um audited nice. code the nice things that i truly like the things you've set i i just want you to know that um not only with the people that are building but the people that are holding those people to those standards um, thank god dude Dude, you are still I mean, a like, standard, and, and thank people you. are learning because of you, and I and I respect it, and I... I'm glad to hear that, man. I like... Because, like, that's the one thing. Like, that the one dude that made the... Uh, what was it called? Hedron? Yeah, I looked at his code and shit. It was like, hey, man, this dude was inspired. He was inspired by Hex, you know? So it had caching. It had fucking audit, you know? Like, it was intelligently written. I'm like, yeah, good job, man, you know? If you're gonna build on top of hacks and you build something, build it good. It was built good. And like, you know, I I, I wish more people would fucking make good products, you know? And, and and like live the actual crypto dream, which is fucking no admin keys, no counterparty risk, hold your own keys, you know? Like the most of that that you can do. So many people wouldn't lose their money, you know, and enrich these these scumbag criminals. Middleman criminals scam fraud fi. I coined that term. You like it? Fraud fi. I don't think people realize I coined that term. Maybe I should just tell them real quick. I coined the term fraud fi. By the way, y'all, uh, if you're up on the speaker stage, raise your hand so that I know you actually have some shit to say and that you're not just up here like fucking taking up spots because I got tons of people. Thank you for that. Can I, can I have a question? Go. Yep. Good morning, you. Good morning, you. Uh, I guess it's good night. Good evening to you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You stay late. You stay late. Yeah, I'm up late. I want to fuck sleep, y'all. These questions are good. As okay. Fuck. Last question for you. Then you are free to sleep. <laughs> and then when you wake up, more. it's a party day. Fourth of July. Well, all right. All right. Okay. Uh, Richard, I saw you so. in Stockholm in June. Doing shopping. Oh, nice. You saw oh, me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where, Where was I? Instagram. Uh, you... Instagram. Uh, no, on uh, Twitter. I saw I saw you on the uh, Jordan Lingard. You know, you were doing shopping. Anyway, uh, I used to work with uh, luxury fashion. So if nice. you want to talk about fashion, I'm here for you. All right. Well, fucking DM me. I love me some fashion. Yeah, awesome. Um. Yeah, exactly. So... I mean, it's, there's a lot to talk about, actually, in fashion. It's not only the looks, and uh, there's uh, different layers to it. I'm Levels still trying to... to find out where Prada's getting these crystals, man. Oh. Prada has got these fucking crystals that are so good on these new products I'm buying. I bought, like, every single Prada crystal thing they make, and, like, I, I love them. Yeah, Prada, they... Okay, one thing I want to mention. Prada, they are very creative, very... Uh, like they're on the age of uh, of uh, uh, being uh, agey, being uh, right. being dominating in the in uh, being really creative. They they right. are they are really really creative. That's true. Every if you watch their fashion show every season, uh, almost everybody else is uh, copying them. However, right. the company is a little bit Google. <laughs> anyway, right. aside from that. I, I, Richard, I want to ask your advice. So I work sure. with Dealflow, Dealflow in DeFi. Sure. Uh, can you please hook up with, uh, hook up, hook me up with some people? And I want to ask you how, I mean, what's, your, I don't, what's your, like, I basically live on an island. Like all these other people in DeFi are fucking alien to me. I don't have nothing <laughs> to do with none of them. Like literally oh, no. none of them. Okay, so what's your... I'm, I'm like the worst person in the world to ask for an intro to anyone else in DeFi because I, I don't know none of these motherfuckers. They know you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It's true. Um, so in your, in your uh, advice, what would you recommend or would you, what would you say the best advice for marketing? Uh, like what, a general DeFi project or what? Yeah, yes, general DeFi project and... Um, yeah, I, I mean, like, I work with the deal flow, so it's early, 
investment opportunities and also bring the bring the the projects and the VCs together. I mean, well, like, why don't you try going to an actual like startup fair, like you know, your local startup thing, and then throw a crypto angle in there. Because I'll go to startup things and there won't be that much crypto. So you just get a booth at like a normal startup fair kind of thing. But it's crypto. And they're, they're looking for money. So that's my best advice on that one. However, the, the startup, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. Uh, the thing is that if they are not in crypto, they usually are fearful. And uh, you have yeah, to but look, actually, I mean, you know, convince them. Hey, that's the whole game. They're fearful of everything. Like it's, you know, they're gonna only buy a couple bags of a couple things, and everything else they're scared of. It's it's worth a try. It's what I would do. When are you coming back to Stockholm next time? It's a good question. Um, I don't know. I'm usually secretive. I usually don't tell anyone where I'm going, and then I only like send pictures after I already left. It's like, it's a good season up there, though. Like, oh, it's perfect. Fucking, pretty it's, nice it's heaven in the summer it's heaven i'll come buy everything from you guys <laughs> yeah you should you should come I will, i'll be your personal shopper all right it sounds good hey it was good talking to you i'll take yeah, a couple more you. questions ciao ciao hey um i have a question kind of building on what ben luck was saying before about stables yeah. um and it's kind of like a little weird offshoot paradigm and i'm wondering if it, it makes more sense to um, build on this this old theory of the Big Mac index, food yeah. industry being the best for yeah. inflation adjusted price, right? Yeah, but the problem is that you can't stock the Big Macs to back it. Like I've already thought about this. Like you would prefer a stable coin be actually stable, but then the problem is to make it actually stable, you actually have to buy that shit, and then that shit expires, or you have overhead from futures, and, like, it's not that easy. You're yeah. along the right lines, but your solution won't be so easily found. Right, so to so, so build on that a little bit. So what if, yeah. instead mm -hmm. of, like, you know, it, because it really is just the price feed, right? So what if... No, you actually have to have the stuff. So buying the Big Macs? Yeah, that's the problem. You can't stock them. What if you can? Well, mm, maybe, so, maybe that would work. I mean, I've got gold. If you mines, can find a way to stock the Big Macs. That. It might work. Like, I mean, I've got gold. Like, I, I literally have access to the gold mines that I can get discounted gold. Like, that's the only reason why I'm thinking about it because I actually have the, this. is vertical for me. Well, this is what okay, I do. So, yeah, maybe. So sure. Instead of but just, it, just right. leave this. Forget about the stable angle and keep it pure. The thing and let someone else take the fucking right, encapsulation you, risk you or whatever to stock the big max if you treat it like a rebase poor guys I just peg listen it. if i have sick as fuck like stable ideas i'm not even going to share them with you because i'm going to do something with them myself you know what i mean yeah no, so I'm this talking. this line of questioning is basically fruitless the only thing i can do is maybe take one of your ideas from you thanks Vincent, like you know listen, dm me man i've got the gold mines i'm not even kidding i believe you i hear you but I mean, I London good bars are is good. Look, the issue is more like there's a lot of money in the transportation and, and vaulting of this shit as well. So getting it out of the ground is like a, one part of the fucking problem. There's a lot I'm of at other 450 parts. an ounce and I got a 10% discount off a of spot. I hear you. Does it cost money to do all that other shit? <laughs> That's where the other 10% is. No, but that's no, 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 no. That's that's f. That's delivered ten percent. Oh, okay. Delivered in our it vaulted, delivered full but on. What kind of iridium are you delivered. sticking in them? Fucking the uh, <laughs> no, tungsten. You putting that all. tungsten in there? No, Man. no, no, not at all. This is actually, <laughs> I got forty three one hundred one Barrick and Newmont Mining guaranteed reserves. I got forty three one hundred one. Oh, they spent thirty million dollars in finding these reserves, and they walked away from them. I've got so much of this in the in a specific country that is really that, let's just say it's the fastest growing country in the world, and you can find out where just by me saying that. Is so it I called? Serious as fuck. Is it called Rectville? Rectville is no, very popular this last couple months. 
<laughs> All right, not guys. What? Uh, one last question, somebody. Let, it's right, not a let's fucking go to stable. One of the, kind of, let's let's not go a business to the guy idea. That's been... It's not a. It's not a fucking stable. Yep. Give me something. No, 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 not at all. We're gonna go to a guy you probably love already. He is one of the the greatest supporters of you. He's on these spaces all the time. He's running it fucking twenty four seven. I'm ready. Famous. You are fucking coming and bringing it from Portugal. My friend, yes. ladies and gentlemen, Orca's friend, and I know Richard is your friend too. The right. famous one himself. Famous to I hope my question didn't get. <laughs> it's the last one of the night, but um, Go for it. good morning. Hope you're okay. Thanks for everything right. you did. Um, I have a question. I don't know if anyone brought it up, but did did, did we bring up the, the the facts of what we're trying to do with the notes? <coughs> is this this? Alternate chain EVM OS shit. That, that, that's something else, but I don't know if you know about Frosty, but what we've been trying to do as a community is that we've been trying Become, to find You're talking ways. about becoming a... Are you talking like becoming yeah, a validator in Pulse Chain? you talking about that? No, 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 no. We actually want to run nodes. <laughs> we want hexagons to run nodes unselfishly so we could run, we could run the consensus <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, no, but like there's only 33 validators. And there might end up even being less, by the way, depending on what the dev team. But there's we, we want to run the nodes refactoring not, going on. We want to run the nodes and not I mean, get paid. We just want to run them so we can. Well, what I'm just saying is like, just listen. You're not part of consensus if you just run a normal node. Normal nodes don't do validating; they just rebroadcast system state to other people. They're useful for unwrapping new users and shit like that, but like, they're not that mandatory or vital so i like i don't mind it it's cool but if you guys don't do it it's okay too everything's gonna be fine you know what i mean mm -hmm. so We're like trying to find ways to do to help in any way shape or form unselfishly i think i think out outbound marketing is the best dude call people say hi tell them if you get crypto right it could be the best thing financially that ever happens to you and it has been for many others I think that's what I'm doing with my time is singing the praises of good shit, you know? I talk about the things I like. I think that's the best thing anybody could do right now. I'm drowning in devs. That shit cannot be quick. And, it can't be doing any quicker than it is. I think outreach to new users is, is what the community can do best, and it has been doing best, by the way. The vast majority of new users comes from you guys, not me. Same goes for content. So, you know, I appreciate what you guys do. I'm I'm very thankful. I know it's hard to tell that sometimes because I'm, I'm, you know, shaking my ass or whatever, but community is the most important part thing. Like, the community is the most important thing in PAX and is the thing I am most proud of. It is the community. So that's you guys. I appreciate what you guys do. We love you, man. We all love you. Thank you, bro. Guys, I'm heading off. I hope that you've had a wonderful time and uh, keep up the good work. You know, bear markets don't last forever. Eventually, them big ass green candles come, and uh, I can't wait. Happy July to you all. Happy Fourth, everybody. Talk Happy Fourth of July. Yes. Thanks, Thanks for coming out. Appreciate your time.